Yes, Clerk, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I have Alder okay. Vanderlees in the meeting, but Mr. Vanderlees, can you please sign in to see the clerk? And then I do not see Brian Johnson, Alder Johnson in the meeting, nor is he signed in to see the clerk. Alder Johnson's out of town in Arizona. So he said he would come into the meeting when I talked okay. to him. Okay, there I'm back. <laughs> I spoke to Alder Johnson about an hour ago and he assured me he would be at the meeting. Okay, well, we will hold a few minutes. Okay, thank you, Mayor. For once, someone's later than me. Ha, ha, ha. So then, Bill, what should I open next? Peanut butter patties, caramel delights, or thin mints? What's next? Caramel. Caramel. I've had some of those already. But oh, well, you didn't say that. I, I shouldn't have asked. I shouldn't have asked. Peanut butter patties. That's, All right, that's, that's, that's top of the list. Oh, they're five bucks a box now too. By the way, that's not going to stop me. Mark, did you did you get yours then? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I got nobody that oh. sells them anymore to me. So <laughs> well, you can buy them. You can buy them at festival or different oh. places. Alder Johnson's texted me that he's in. I just don't see him. Uh, yes, I do have him both in the meeting and also um, in civic clerk. Okay. All right, so everybody's in now, clerk? Um, not quite. Okay. Give me one moment. <clears throat> um, Mr. Vanderleest, can you please sign? Oh, hi, Mr. Vanderleest. Can you please sign in to civic clerk? Oh, before we get ugly. That's your new oh. baby, grandson. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Granddaughter? Oh. Granddaughter, right? Yep, yep. Granddaughter. Nice. All right, congratulations. Thank you. She's so different than her brother. She sleeps all the time. Huh? <laughs> How many do you have? Uh, four now. Four? Oh, oh yeah. okay. <laughs> yep. Well, I just got the two, and I think it's too late for them to have any more. <laughs> I just Chris? went daughter, so that's it. <laughs> just keep pushing. Chris? Oh, oh, keep pushing. Chris is done. Oh, no. I work with guys that got surprised in their 50s. <laughs> <laughs> My mom did. Yeah. They're going to be grandkids for a while. <laughs> <laughs> there, I'll back you up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hannah has to finish college first. <laughs> Did she make it back okay, Chris? I think she's almost back, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Chris, can you hear me? Alter Vanderleest? Hey, Chris? John. Hi, can John. You hear? I notice now. Okay, yes. can, you hear? can you hear me? Loud and clear. Over. Roger, Roger. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Vanderlees, can you please sign into Civic Clerk? <laughs> sure will. I Thank do you. The, uh, meow, meow. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. She's always at me on the computer anyway. She is trying to get him out. Come on, cat. Uh, Mr. Vanderleest, I'm going to mark you present and voting. Okay. Uh, Mayor, we have all 12 pres present and all 12 are signed into Civic Clerk. All right, very well. Called order the meeting of the Common Council for March 16, 2021. Clerk? All 12 are present, Your Honor, and signed into Civic Clerk. 
Very good. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Now we have the invocation presented by Alder Weary. Alder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is one that I used when I was scout leader at Annie Jackson School. It's uh, called the President Truman's Prayer. O almighty and everlasting God, creator of heaven, earth, and the universe. Help me to be, to think, to act what is right as it is right. Make me truthful and honorable in all things. Make me honest for the sake of right and honor and without thought of reward to me. Give me the ability to be charitable, forgiving, and patient with everyone. Help me to understand their intentions and their shortcomings. You understand mine. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alder. Approval <clears throat> well, the minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion has been made to approve the minutes from the March 2nd, 2021 Common Council meeting. That was made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Lefebvre. Any corrections? Seeing no requests, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. As have it, the minutes have been approved. Agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Any changes? <clears throat> Seeing no requests, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. You guys have it. The agenda before you has been approved. On to report by the mayor. So as many of you can probably attest, it's been a, a pretty crazy week for those of us who serve the city here. <clears throat> Too many untruths have been said and written to begin to count, and the wanton disregard for facts displayed by people who should know better has been shocking, but I guess that's the state of our politics. Rumor, innuendo, and hearsay substitute for arguments. Character assassination is just part of the game. But this isn't a game. This is our democracy. For me personally, I suppose I've signed up to be a target for all kinds of grievances, but that's not the case for our city employees or poll workers. Those who were involved in the November elections deserve nothing but our gratitude and appreciation. To have their work demeaned, disrespected, and mischaracterized has been really tough to take. And we shouldn't take it. I'm glad to see the resolution on the agenda tonight that's been brought forward by a number of council members, a resolution which reasonably and forthrightly defends the integrity of our city's elections. And as the city's policymaking body, this is an appropriate action to take. This council, without a dissenting vote, accepted the assistance of the Center for Tech and Civic Life. And for good reason. Without these dollars, we would not have been able to provide hazard pay and PPE for poll workers, hire voter navigators, produce voter guides, or purchase election-related equipment. This council saw the wisdom in the application for grant dollars, and they deserve that. Now, nothing of human creation is perfect, but our election was pretty darn close. I was proud of our city's efforts and you know, immensely pleased with the work done by poll workers and city employees to pull off a free, fair, safe, and secure election in the middle of a pandemic. It was a sight to see, a really beautiful thing to witness, and I will be forever grateful to each and every person who made Election Day successful for the people of Green Bay. With that, we will move along to the rest of our meeting and we have announcements. Any announcements for Mayor? Alder Story, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we had a sad situation that happened yesterday in Green Bay. A friend of mine works at Rockabilly's and one of her <clears throat> employees got stabbed. <clears throat> she survived. Sadly, another person did not, and you've probably heard the story and read it. I just want to say uh, I talked to her for a while. She's very upset, and I just stated that you know we're all thinking of you and your families, and for the for the family of the person who died, we're very very sorry. Keep we'll keep you in our thoughts and prayers. So I just wanted to let you know I talked to her, and I'm hoping that people will recover in time. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Mr. Mayor. Alder Lefebvre. Okay, I want to thank uh, Alder Stoyer for 
uh, mentioning that. Um, also, I want to remind everybody that I did uh, send out your um, to your email the uh, sustainable farming and your food that's happening in Northeast Wisconsin. Uh, we're doing the virtual um, program this Saturday. And if you uh, hopefully you didn't, uh, you, you kept the email. If you want to join, you can still um, go on and watch the uh, film first. And then we will have the uh, panel and the discussion on Saturday at, we start at one o'clock. But please watch the film first. It's an excellent, excellent film. It's about 70 minutes, it does take time, but it's very, mm -hmm. And I think everybody on the council, and I also sent it out to all 26 of the uh, Brown County supervisors. It's got a lot of information in there that I think that you need to be aware of that we all need to, um, to um, work on improvements on things that are uh, coming about. Um, there's a lot of issues on it. So I hope everybody will uh, watch the, at least watch the film and then hopefully you will attend Saturday's program. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Alder. Other announcements? Seeing no more announcements, we will move along to public hearings. So we have just one item here, planning ordinance number 01-21, an ordinance amending the official map of the city of Green Bay to revise the Greenway boundaries along Erie Road. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to this item? Anyone here who would like to speak to this item? Is there anyone here who'd like to speak to this item? Hearing no speakers, let the record reflect that fact. Now we are on to ordinances, second reading for adoption. Motion to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 I'm sorry, um, we do have to use the board here. And that is adopted unanimously. Now we're on to the report of the Improvement and Services Committee. Approved. Second. Motion to approve, made by Alder Dorf, was it? No, nope, it was not. It was Alder Corpus Dax. Alder Corpus Dax, and a second from? Second. Second by, by Alder. Um, that's a motion uh, to adopt the report of the Improvement and Services Committee from March 10. 2021, any items here to be handled separately? Three and four. Three and four will be handled separately. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay? The ayes have it, the report has been approved with the exception of items three and four. Wishes on item three? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Fave. Item three was pulled by Alder Johnson. Mayor, I, if, if it uh, would appease whoever made the motion, we can actually take these items up together. Motion to, do we have to suspend rules for that or can we just? Um, yes. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Second. Okay. Motion to suspend the rules and take items three and four up with one roll call vote. That was made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Alder Johnson, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, is, is Director Grenier with us or do we have a proxy tonight? I believe uh, Assistant Director Brunette should be joining us. Yes, uh, I'm here. Okay, uh, Assistant Director Burnett, if you could just, uh, I watched the video on this. Unfortunately, it couldn't be at the meeting, um, uh, but obviously this affecting a very large uh, park in my district. Um, could you provide just a little bit more overview and detail about specifically 
uh, what these amounts are for. Um, and in particular, what I want to be sure of is that um, that we're just trying to, uh, I guess, is, is the point that, uh, I guess, the point in the process right now, is it really to kind of figure out what's possible over there to fix the problem? Uh, but the whole idea behind hiring Brown and Fowler right now would be, or I mean McMahon, is to, before we can decide what shape these things will be and what amenities we can put in to appease the neighborhood and, and make them a little more, you know, more user friendly, that type of thing. We have to figure out exactly what size they're going to be. So the here will take us all the way through design, all the way to bidding and construction. But part of that process, it's going to be an iterative process to determine number one, what will it take for these ponds? Will they be a wet pond? Will it, can we do it with underground storage? And if so, what size? And then what are the elevations for the inlet and the outlet pipes, things like that. So we have to get the growth size of the pond done before we can even discuss and, and bring in the other parties to talk about it. So what we're trying to do is get, first of all, get the consultant on board, get him to do the calculations. And then once we know the calculations, then we know some of the other parameters we have to work with. I mean, it may be where there may be too much area needed here, or we decide not to go this route. And I mean, that's what the, the consultant needs to tell us though. Sure, and then to that point, uh, it, is there a reason that we separated these degree of them as one where you know maybe we could be assessed separately i think we did it separately just because it is two separate facilities i mean we normally try to do the facilities uh one contract per facility I presume then that simply by having these separated i presume the consultant would still be able to evaluate how these two facilities is interact oh exactly yeah it's the same same consultant so it's uh they'll be working to, you know together in-house on, on how that works so question uh is we're going through this design process will there be an opportunity for public input we internally at dpw we haven't talked about that i know that uh, in talking to uh director ditch I, that's one of his concerns um you know obviously we do want to involve the public it's because this does affect their neighborhood is number one you like you say that is you're going to lose some area at the park but the other hand is this is also going to help some of their neighbors with the flooding issues that we have so it's kind of a you know a two-edged sword here is which which one do you want so but until we like i said until we figure out the actual area of the ponds and if or we can do underground storage then we, once we know those answers, then we can start talking to the various entities that are involved here. So from your professional perspective, would it make sense um, to have some community engagement after uh, the plans are introduced or during that process? Because you, you hit it on the head. My concern um, is to convey back um, received from the neighbors, which is the, the potential for significant loss of parts of their park. So I'm just trying to figure out when the best time is to engage in that dialogue. Probably would be after the consultant gets to run the preliminary numbers and tell us the preliminary sizing of the devices. At that point, because then we'd have the minimal amount of investment in on consulting fees. And if it ends up being to the point where the devices are too large, then you know, and I think that that would be up to council and the mayor to make, you know, decide if we want to go a different direction or not. And that would occur only part way through this contract. Is that correct? Yeah, and it, these are time and materials. So it's not like they're lump sum contracts. Right, okay, in which case then I would offer up an amendment um, that when we go through those initial stages um, that we revisit and, and uh, I guess open the door for community engagement to determine uh, if we want to continue the finalization of that agreement. That would be a formal motion, Mayor. Okay. Uh, could you make it a, maybe a bit more specific to direct the department or? Sure. I guess I'm going to look maybe for some assistance then from Assistant Director Burnett. Uh, how to word um, the timing 
of that, uh, the way that he explained it. Um, but basically, I would like to do community input once that first phase is complete, as, as uh, Assistant Director Burnett explained. So direct staff to c conduct? Staff uh, to conduct a public information meeting once the preliminary design is complete. Perfect. Preliminary design. That's what I was looking for. Okay. That, that is my motion. Very okay. good. I'll, I'll second. Amendment has been offered by Alder Johnson. I think Alder Scannell is first to second there. Uh, further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The item has been amended. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion to approve as amended, Alder Scannell? Yes. Uh, that And that has been seconded by Alder Gerlach. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. <clears throat> the ayes have it, and the item has been adopted. Just real quick from, from my point of view, Alder Johnson, uh, agree completely with your sentiments. I think, you know, we actually have an opportunity here to create a stormwater facility that's a real amenity for the neighborhood. Um, so that's certainly my hope is uh, at the end of this process, we'll have something that'll be appreciated by, uh, by everyone in the city, uh, especially the neighbors. And then on to report of the Protection and Policy Committee. Motion to approve. Motion made by Alder Stevens. Second. Seconded by Alder Lefebvre to approve uh, the report of the Protection and Policy Committee from March 8th, 2021. Uh, any items here to be handled, Sally? Hearing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The report has been approved. Plan Commission. Motion to approve. Second. Alder Scannell makes a motion to approve. Second. That is to approve the report of the Plan Commission from March 8, 2021. Any items here to be handled separately? Seeing none, all in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> the ayes have, have it. Finance. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax, as to approve the report of the Finance Committee from March 9, 2021. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none. All in favor of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. <clears throat> you guys have it. The report has been approved. Personnel. Move to approve. Second. Motion has been made to approve by Alder Corpus Dax, seconded by Alder Weary. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it. Report. Report has been RDA. Move to approve. Second. Motion to approve made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Gerlach. Uh, and that's a motion to approve the report of the Redevelopment Authority from March 9, 2021. Any items here to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the remainder of, that, of approving that report, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, you guys have it, and that report has been approved. Report of the Tax Increment Districts Joint Review Board. Motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made to approve by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Gerlach, and that is the report of the Tax Incremental Districts Joint Review Board meeting on March 8, 2021. Mayor? Yes. Uh, could, could we get a brief update from uh, Director Steck Schulte? Um, I saw that there was no recommendation made. Just curious what, uh, if, if we had brought all of our items forward to the JRB, and if so, um, why they chose not to take action? Yeah, absolutely. Director Steck Schulte. Maybe you're muted. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah. 
the, the uh, resolutions are presented in draft form at the organizational meeting for the joint review board. They will be meeting again. At, once again, council takes action on that. They will be actually reviewing to actually execute uh, their full resolutions regarding this. Uh, draft resolutions were presented. Uh, there was one comment uh, basically on the two resolutions that they will be required to, uh, to enact at their, their next meeting. Uh, simply it's being a little bit more specific on the projects on which the transfers from seven to 23 will be used for. So those, uh, those changes have been incorporated into the council resolutions as requested. And those are projects that, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have previously approved as part of our capital improvement plan. That is, that is correct, Alder. These were actually, these were good, originally scheduled for last year, um, but they're designed to, do, to go on with the, one of the legacy hotel projects being discussed in that area. Obviously with COVID-19, that project has not proceeded uh, as originally anticipated. We are in continuing in discussions with those and are anticipating the, the project moving forward this year, as well as the improvements as discussed. Okay, thank you, Director. Thanks, Alder Johnson. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, that report has been approved. Receive in place on file. Motion to receive in place on file. Second. Motion has been made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax, to receive in place on file the municipal court and building permit report for February 2021. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving those reports, please signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. The ayes have it, and those re reports received in place file. We are on to Committee of the Whole. So we've got a couple items here. We'll move, of course, uh, sequentially through them, starting with item one, consideration with possible action on allegations pertaining to the 2020 election including discussion of recent media reports and the March 10, 2021 Wisconsin Assembly Committee on Campaigns and Elections meeting. Um, I think to start things off, it makes the most sense for our city attorney, Attorney Chavez, to kind of set the table for both our council and for the public in terms of um, what the city's position is on some of these recent events. Thank you, Mayor. So in preparation for this evening's meeting, um, I had a couple of conversations with various elders and one thing that was requested um, on Friday was for my office to undertake um, creating a report for the council on what has occurred um, with regards to the election over the last year. On Monday afternoon, so yesterday about an 24 hours ago, I provided you guys with the initial draft of what my findings are. This is something that will ultimately become public record. It's not public record yet simply because it's not finalized. And instead, what we're talking about at this point is just my preliminary findings. So at the request of the council, I went through and provided an overview of what exactly has happened over um, you know, the, the election season. So uh, everything happening from the beginning of uh, beginning, beginning of May all the way to what happened through um, election night. And what I can tell you at this point is that nothing is uh, coming up that even remotely points to any wrongdoing on, this, on the part of the city, much less city employees or even any of our contractors. There's been a lot of misinformation that is being thrown out there as far as um, actual facts that are not supported by any any records of the city or any recollections of any city employees. So I'll start with addressing the specific ones that have come up and then uh, we can also move to, to questions and also about what the report will ultimately look like. So the first and most important one I think is that the, the city clerk took a leave of absence and on October 23rd and when the city clerk took her leave by virtue of our statute or by virtue of our ordinate statute, the deputy city clerk steps into that role. In this case, the clerk was Chris Teske and the deputy city clerk was Kim with the role of clerk at that point. Now, the clerk's office was already overwhelmed with work 
prior to the departure of uh, Chris Teske for her for her leave of absence. And so a lot of other departments were stepping in to provide assistance at that time. This included Celestine Jeffries and Ahmad Rivetta Wagner, Wagner from the mayor's department, but it also included people such as, um, you know, members of the law department were providing physical assistance with processing ballots, people from DPW and parks providing assistance with, with um, processing ballots, DPW. There were numerous emails going out asking for assistance from various departments when they had time to provide assistance, and those were those things were already happening prior to the, the clerk's office becoming short-staffed. The way departments were assisting varied. Some were providing direct elections assistance. Others were providing assistance by assuming responsibilities normally held by the clerk. For example, um, Deputy Finance Director Pam Manley, I guess she's technically the treasurer. So Treasurer Manley um, stepped in to assume the roles of clerk at the meetings. She was the one running the meetings so that the clerks could focus on the election. Um, and our department was also providing assistance directly. I was having um, any of my employees who weren't under a, a time crunch with a, a deadline were assigned to go assist with the clerk's office as well. So there were a ton of people who were assisting from the city throughout the entire election, the election season. So this was not an isolated situation. It's just that the clerk's office was overwhelmed and had way too much work to be able to complete everything that was needed to, to run these elections. The next allegation that has come up is that um, we somehow empowered external people to run the election for, for it. And the deputy city clerk is actually the one who stepped in when clerk Tessie um, was on, on leave. And so it was her calls ultimately that were um, put into place. Like she was she was acting as the clerk at that point. That was by virtue of her position. She was the deputy clerk and that was her role. Uh, I'm not really sure where the allegations that Mr. Uh, Spitzer Rubenstein were I don't I don't know where those allegations came from. I think there's a handful of emails where he was clearly providing assistance to the city. But his his capacity sometimes as an advisor to the city. So he did a number of things at the request of the city, such as putting together a training manual on how to process things at central count, but that was ultimately provided to the deputy clerk and the and the person who ended up running central count, Jimmy Fugge, um, to review before that was actually even adopted. So the clerk's office made their recommendation or to it before anything even happened to it. Mr. Rubenstein also was providing assistance by, you know, just kind of acting as like an extra set of hands, I guess is the easiest way to consider it. So there were a number of things that needed to happen to make the transition to KI work. Um, if you guys will recall, you were notified at the end of October that KI was moving or the central count was moving to the KI. The, I believe it was the 22nd when that was just, that decision was made and that was the day before Chris Teske took her leave. And the reason that came about was because the city was having difficulty accommodating social distancing and adequate access for, ob uh, for observation at the issue when it spread it over two floors and we received a number of complaints uh, about the potential for for people to not be able to properly observe central count, including receiving a letter from a joint letter from the Republican Party of Wisconsin and the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, in, indicating that they felt like such, uh, central count needed to be moved. So that decision was was discussed at length before it actually went into effect. And in order to make that move happen, a lot of things had to fall into place. We had to make sure that the DS-450, which was a new piece of equipment, it already had its test and would be moved and that would require recalibration. We had to make sure that the, the venue could be secured, that there was um, adequate time to notice it, that WEC was going to be um, consulted and confer with our decisions ultimately or not find any issues with our decisions. So a lot of things had 
the false, which is why we didn't announce that KI was the official place for the election until I believe it was the 30th or so when the, the announcement of the move to KI occurred. So with all the stuff that was happening, uh, Mr. Rubenstein, as one of our advisors and another body on the ground, was able to make contact with the KI. That is really where his involvement ended, though. So he was doing things at our, at our request. And so once he made the contact, confirmed all the different stuff that we needed, um, the actual agreement itself was signed by Deputy, I'm sorry, Director Ellen Becker. And then the keys were picked up by then Chief of Staff Jeffries. No keys were ever in Mr. Rubenstein's hand. They stayed, so Selstein Jeffries picked them up, gave them to Director Ellen Becker, and Director Ellen Becker maintained those in her control um, for the remainder he had access to KI. On election day, there was one person in charge at Central Count, that was Jamie Seavey. She was the Chief Inspector of Central Count. So Jamie was the one who was ultimately running the election, making sure that everything uh, related to the election was happening the way that it needed to, that decisions were being made in accordance with law. That was that was uh, Jamie Fugge's role. There were a, a number of people who were assisting at, at Central Count in addition to Jamie, but they were assisting Jamie ultimately. So this included not only Mr. Rubenstein and Mr. Uh, Rivera Wagner that we'll talk about in a minute, but also people such as um, Director Ellen Becker and Treasurer Manley, who were seeing as whatever Jamie needed assistance on. They both worked elections previously and assisted uh, Central Account previously over the years. And so she was tapped and tapping their resources to have them basically running around and providing assistance. And then whenever anybody couldn't answer a question, they directed it to Jamie. And when Jamie couldn't answer a question, she contacted Kim Waite back at City Hall. So the other people who were there were Ahmad Rivera Wagner, and he was there um, really acting in logistics. So there were a number of things that he was specifically put in charge of, none of which related to the actual election itself. That included checking people in, making sure that people were um, given their parking passes, um, making sure that they were given badges to wear. Um, he coordinated lunch. He was making announcements when people lost phones and stuff of that nature. And then he was also in charge of um, coordinating with the media um, throughout the day. Mr. Rubenstein was assisting him with that because he was there as still as one of the city's advisors. So there is a lot of allegations that somehow because he was present that he was taking control, which is not not the case. Um, I've spoken to numerous people who were there and no interaction with Mr. Rubenstein. Um, instead, they said that, you know, they really had no interaction with him whatsoever other than, you know, maybe him telling him that, you know, lunch was ready or something to that effect. Um, there were questions as to what he was doing with the printer. Again, he was there as an advisor to the city, and he had a printer because there were a number of metrics that were being run to determine. This is this is stuff coming from city staff. Okay, so this isn't stuff coming from Mr. Rubenstein, who, you know, we, we're going to assume that his uh, that he's got interest in covering up. This is directly from our city staff, who's indicated that there were metrics as far as how many ballots we needed to process each hour in order for us to be able to reach uh, or to, to gauge how long it was going to take us to um, count all of the votes that day. And he was running those numbers to kind of figure out how how we were, where we were on track and stuff. Um, my understanding is he never even even used the printer, that it was there, but it never, it never got turned on. Um, there was a complaint made to the WEC I have not had a, an opportunity to speak to the WEC at this point. Um, I, I have reached out, but we have not heard back. Um, and then, of course, there are other people who made the complaint that we, we, don't, we don't have that information. But essentially, our understanding is that somebody complained to the WEC that Mr. Rubenstein was there, and the WEC called 
deputy director, then acting clerk, Kim Way, and informed her that they had received these, these complaints and that they felt the most prudent course of action was for Mr. Spritzer to, to cease acting as an advisor and instead just act as, as an observer. Director or, or uh, Deputy Clerk Waite contacted Jamie Fugge at Central Count, told her of that director from the, from Central, from uh, uh, the WEC, and that happened around the noon hour. So as of that time, there was nobody there providing any advisory um, services or anything to the city. Mr. Rubenstein respected that and, and um, left without incidents when he returned much later that day. It was exclusively as an advisory or a, a, an election observer role. So with this, none of the allegations that are being made have any basis in in fact, we aren't finding any credible evidence of any of the allegations. Our, my department has been on um, full speed ahead, looking at all of the records that have come out, contacting people within our, um, not not just within the city, but also contacting people at WC. I've reached out to Mr. Rubenstein myself. All of us are trying to get to the bottom of where are these allegations are coming from and is there any truth to it. My findings of things are indicating that there is no liability on the part of the city because we did no, we didn't do anything wrong. There's no negligence. There's no um, improper actions. Whether or not somebody likes the way we administered the election, that's irrelevant to the determination of whether or not we did anything incorrectly and we did not. The city followed the state and federal laws in administering the election and there, there are no records no information, no facts which support anything to the contrary. So with that information, what I will tell you is that the discussion this evening should really be centered around any additional information you would like my, my staff to look into as we are generating this report for you all. Um, there's, I'm happy to look into any additional information you, you want looked into. Um, we don't have any problem with, with, with continuing to determine the fact finding that we are, our investigation that we're, we're, we're doing. Um, but really what we are looking at today is any additional um, facts that you have been made privy to and what further information you would like for us to, to look at should there be any. And with that, I'll stand for questions. Thank you, Attorney Chavez. We also have a good number uh, of folks who are attending from the public I don't know if Alders would like to open the floor now or or um, engage in some questions. Alder Galvin. Your Honor? Yes, Alder Galvin, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I, I was uh, told that there, there might be some people that want to talk, but I think um, I would prefer, and I, and I think everyone should have a chance to talk, but because of the amount of mis- in my opinion, and after listening to Attorney Chavez, it, uh, it bolsters my opinion that there's there's a lot of misinformation out there, and um, and I'm sure people. I've had some people call me that were pretty wound up based on that misinformation, um, and I would prefer, if it's possible, if, if everyone's in agreement, that we uh, ask the questions that we have, our concerns of Attorney Chavez or other staff that were involved with this incident. Uh, this voting um, and maybe that these some of the concerns or comments that people in the public want to make and maybe this would thus help them maybe formulate and maybe they still want to ask the same questions again maybe they don't but this might help it so we don't have people asking questions that are going to be answered later on so we, we get all the information out there up front and then let them formulate the questions that they have for us or the comments and if you want, I'd, I'd make that a motion if that needs to be, or we can just continue on as we're going. No, 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 it doesn't need to be a motion. It's always the council's prerogative to open here or not open the floor. So um, if you have any thoughts or questions to share, Alder Galvin, go go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, this is for Attorney Chavez. Um, and then I might need uh, some of the other department heads might need to, to jump in. So as from what I've been reading uh, from information that uh, has been put out there, there's actually like a, a chain of evidence or a chain of custody when it comes to the the, the votes um, that the city of Green Bay receives. Is that correct? 
Yep, that is correct. Okay, and, and for those people out there, chain of custody, chain of evidence means that people take responsibility for the votes. And when they're passed over to another person in that chain, documents and forms have to be signed or initialed. Uh, for example, I was a poll worker and I brought all the votes from our ward down to City Hall. I had to sign several pieces of paper and then everything was sealed and I had to sign the seal uh, that contained the votes. I brought those down to City Hall, waited in line until one of the clerks could take those from me, break the seal in front of me and verify the, that, that the votes I brought matched up and everything was squared away. And it doesn't seem as there's any concern took place at the wards or from the wards to City Hall. The concern seems to be what happened afterwards and at Central Count. So uh, Attorney Chavez, once those ballots leave City Hall and go to Central Count, is there a chain of custody that takes place and, and who's responsible for that? So the way this election shook out was different from what has happened in the past. This is the first time that Central Count has moved out of City Hall. And so in abundance of caution, what was implemented was uh, first a requirement that anybody who was going to touch the ballots or the boxes the ballots were in um, or be part of the chain of custody absolutely had to be an employee of the city and so the decision was made that director Ellen and this was all based exclusively on who was available to do what director Ellen Becker assumed responsibility for meeting DPW at um, City Hall on election day so the night before deputy director deputy clerk wait and Jamie Fugge locked up all the ballots, they taped them up, they um, got them to the bins, and then they made sure that they were ready to go for um, election day. At the six o'clock in the morning, I guess it was more like 5.45 or so, uh, Director Ellen Becker met the gentleman from DPW. So our workers from DPW loaded up, they, they arrived at City Hall with a truck for one of our, our DPW trucks to load the ballots, big giant boxes, um, onto the um, truck and take them to the KI Center. So Director Ellen Becker was the one who initialed, noting the all of the doc, uh, all of the locked ballots, locked and sealed ballot boxes. Um, and then when they arrived at KI, I was waiting there so that I could note what they ha they had arrived and I initialed off. If she signed off on the initial part, I signed off that they arrived. And then as part of that, so after they arrived, we had to get them up into the elevator. Um, Treasurer Manley was the person who rode up in the elevator with them along with our DPW employees. And then from there, they were placed into the central count room with where uh, Jamie Fugue was located. So at the end of the night, when, and I shouldn't say night, the next morning when everything was completed, um, I believe that Director Ellen Becker assisted with getting those all back over there again. So there were, she was the one who signed off. They were given to DPW guys again to, get, to transfer back over and she met them over there and actually signed off getting them back into City Hall. So at all times, those those ballots were with city employees from the time they left the city hall, the clerk's office in city hall at 545 in the morning on election day until they um, returned the next day only because that's when the counting was completed. Were, were the ballots, once the ballots left city hall at 545 until they were done being counted, was there any time that the central count was left unattended by anybody? No. So Jamie Fugue indicated today that she was there from the moment that it opened until the time that it ended. She actually was the last person to leave along with Treasurer Manley. They wrapped things up and, um, and were there the entire time. She said that she never left for more than five minutes. She said she got one meal break and one bathroom break in that entire time. So she was physically present in that room for about 24 hours. Um, and then there were a number of people in addition to 
So Jamie Fugue Geek over there, such as Director Ellen Becker and Director uh, Treasurer Manley. Okay, and, and when you say employees, you're not talking about contract employees. You're talking about about uh, a week, <clears throat> Green Bay City employees. Yes. So, and there were there were some um, personnel things that were happening to kind of make things work. But we're talking about actual um, members, committed members of the staff who are not seasoned, who are not temporary. So, one of the security measures that the city took, um, because this was such a unique situation, was for every person there were there were about a hundred people at at Vince's account as far as poll workers go. And what we ultimately did with that was, um, and I shouldn't say, like, I didn't do this, this is city. So, and they had very, very smart um, vision of foresight to do this, but they assigned one city person, one city employee with um, a non-employee so that there was at least one person they knew working at each um, table where the, the votes were being tallied. So there's always two pairs of, of uh, inspectors and in each one of those pairs was a city employee. In addition, the person who was running the DS450 was the director of public works. Um, the person who was assisting with, um, as I stated, who was assisting Jamie directly was director Ellen Becker and treasurer Manley. Uh, the people that were assigned to do reconstructs of the ballots were either former employees of the clerk's office who I believe had retired previously um, and then the former clerk himself the she assigned two city attorneys um, and then there was um, I believe one more position that was it was it was um, oh it was IT members of IT who were handling stuff with ballots um, at the at the tail end of things so after the ballots had been counted placing those into the I guess the ballot counted boxes. This is, so yes, yeah, these are trusted members of the city who have everything to lose if they if they were to you know tamper mm -hmm. with things. These are trusted members of city hall. All right, and, and when you say non-employee, you're talking about people like me, a poll worker that was hired by the city. I'm, I'm sorry. Correct. I'm talking about people who volunteer to to assist with the election, okay. members of the community. Were observers allowed in the central count the entire time um, the ballots were there? Yes, they were. And were there any complaints from those observers to staff? Um, the, from my understanding, there were a handful of complaints about different things, whether it be about the lighting in certain areas or people not speaking loud enough. Um, and then there were other things that happened external from, from central count itself, but as far as things that were happening, yes, there were some times that, were, that complaints were made and and those were all directed to uh, Jamie Fugge as the chief inspector. Okay, and, and to your understanding, were those complaints rectified or at least um, the people were advised if Jamie wasn't able to appease them? So I'll give you, um, so, so I, I don't really know the answer to that one per se. I, would, I can look into that for you. Okay. But what I can say is that the way that the, um, the way that the statutes are set up, the chief inspector is really the ultimate authority at the polling location. They're the one who makes the final call. Now, outside of that is the clerk. So in this instance, it would have been eight. Okay. And have, have we talked to Kim Waite at all since she left the city about the uh, November election? I have not. I can't speak for anybody else, but she is, she is on our list of people that we would still like to speak to. Okay. Um, did you take an, an oath when you became uh, the city attorney? Yes. And, and what was the extent of that oath? <laughs> I don't remember exactly, but essentially that I would fulfill my, my job. More importantly, though, I took an oath as an attorney um, to adhere to all the laws of the state of Wisconsin and the standards of the state bar. And, and what would happen if, uh, 
it was shown and proven that you had violated uh, your oath uh, as an attorney. Are you asking what type of discipline I'd be uh, I would be yes. subject to? Yes. It would ultimately depend on the ethics commission. Um, and the ethics, and, and I mean that as the state bars ethics commission. So they have a number of people who have hearings on this type of stuff, and then they recommend a, a, a um, penalty at that point. So it could be anywhere from a fine or a warning to disbarment. All right. And, and if you were found to have um, um, given false testimony here or false information, could you be charged legally? Yes, that's perjury. All right. Now, what about the uh, other people that were involved in the chain of custody? Uh, uh, Director Ellen Becker, um, Director uh, Mambly or Treasurer Mambly, and any of the other city employees that uh, put their name or initials on any paperwork verifying that uh, what they were doing was uh, legal and just? Um, I'd have to look into, so let me back them and explain why it is that this would qualify as perjury because I have taken an oath um, to, uh, I basically have taken an oath of candor as an attorney, which is why if I'm giving testimony and on behalf of my client when I'm representing my client, that's why I'm, I'm subject. That doesn't necessarily apply to other people per se, but that doesn't mean that things um, that uh, they get off scot-free. So yes, like the city could always take action against somebody. And if somebody is acting fraudulently, that is criminal misconduct. And that would be something that would be subject to criminal sanctions. All right. Um, going back to the DPW employees that transported the votes from City Hall to the KI Center, how many trucks were used to do that? Um, I can't remember if it was one or two. It was a lot of commotion when we were when they were getting dropped off i want to say it was one but they may have had to have them in a second one would, would director ellen becker know um i imagine she would but she is not here tonight All right. what about um treasurer mambly she is also not here tonight but i don't know if she would know that okay and, and how many employees uh, how many dpw employees were assigned to each truck I'm trying to remember how many people were coming in and out. I'd say it was probably six or seven. Okay. All right. I I, uh, I don't have any uh, other questions right now. I, I appreciate everything you've done with this and uh, all the, the work you've done uh, getting all the documents out there for the public Put this on the city's page. Thank you. Thanks, Alder sure. Galvin. <clears throat> Alder Stoyer. You're muted, Alder Stoyer. Who is so good about that? Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's a couple things here. I, I did work at Central Count for nine hours, so I, that's a whole side story. I can I can talk about those, those things. I, I will in a little bit. But I've had a, numerous questions that have come forward from, you know, citizens and <clears throat> other people. Ask these of Attorney Chavez, and if the mayor or anybody else wants to chime in, that's fine. Some of these will be maybe one or two word answers, and we may have touched on some of them, but I'm just going to go through these quickly. So, Attorney Chavez, um, so these questions uh, were, were all the funds from the $1.6 million election grant received and dispersed by the city treasurer? I would have to double check those, but I believe the, the record. So I don't know if all the funds have been um, expended at this point is what I'm saying. But yes, all of the, the expenditures would have had to go through the um, treasurer. Okay. <clears throat> Next, who is responsible for maintaining accounting and disbursement of the funds? I presume that was the treasurer. That is correct. I spoke with her today and she confirmed that she was the one who was um, handling that portion of it. Okay. Uh, not that it matters in the sense, but how much money remains in the grant? We still have monies left, correct? I don't know the answer to that one. Clerk okay. Jeffries. I believe you're uh, Alder, Alder Story. Oh, Clerk Jeffries okay. could, could speak to that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Storyer, we were um, 
granted an extension of the remaining funds, which was $731,000. Okay. Which need to be expended by June 30th. All right. Okay, I knew there was some monies left. I just wanted to check on that. Uh, okay, is there a published and audited report on income and expense of the grant, including details on vendors and personnel that received payment? Mm -hmm. A report was provided to the Finance Committee in February, um, okay. explaining exactly what, what expenditures had been made. And like I said, some of these answers might be known already, but the public is out there as well. So I'm trying to you know, let them know as well, so. Um, yes, sir. Okay, who is charged with the responsibility of selecting the number and location of polling places in Green Bay? As I presume that's the clerk, along with um, others. It, it is the clerk, but this year was a unique situation um, because of the, of the way things ran out. So the clerk, I believe, always brings the polling locations to the council for um, final approval, but it's really, dependent upon what is available at the time. Um, this year, there were the ad hoc elections committee provided assistance in locating the uh, polling locations just because there was so much difficulty in finding those. Okay, <clears throat> moving on. <clears throat> uh, were Wisconsin statutory regulations regarding election management followed in Green Bay? Yes. Okay. Was the clerk and clerk's office performing the duties as required by Wisconsin state statutes? Yes. And in her absence, it was in her absence, it was the deputy clerk. Okay. Did the mayor's office and/or the city administration supplant the city city clerk's duties in running the November election? No, they did not. I'm going to keep moving on. Did the mayor's office and or the city administration violate any state or local laws and ordinances with respect to the November election? No. Were Wisconsin statutory regulations followed regarding bidding pro procedures required by statutes or ordinances in the selection of election assistance workers? I'm a little confused by that. Are they asking if we had to procure election, like employees? Because what right. happened with employees is they were hired um, to, they had to go through the, the normal, I don't, I don't want to, I don't know if the normal HR process is the way, right way to, to address it, but they did have to go through the hiring process. Okay. Was there any tampering or altering of absentee ballots or other ballots in the November election? No, there was not. Is there a list of any persons or organizations that were complicit in the alterations, miscounts, or the destruction of uncounted ballots? The, since there was no alteration, tampering, um, okay. nothing that, no. Like I said, some of these questions are understood and a lot of people know them already, but I'm asking them partly on, for the public's purpose. Did any city administration member benefit financially from any of the grant monies barring, barring the monies that they earned for working at the polls? No, the monies were used pretty much for buying supplies and then paying for uh, services. But as far as, as benefiting financially, no, nobody actually was for, um, I, I don't remember if employees received hazard pay or not for work in the election but it was based on the election work that was completed and those rates were established for every person who worked as a poll worker. Next, <clears throat> the ad hoc, <clears throat> yeah, ad hoc elections committee was set up in May of 2020 to assist with the August 2020 primary and the no November 2020 election. Was this committee helpful or detrimental in the workings of these elections? I, I think I know the answer but describe the effect on the clerk's office by this committee, both positive and negative. Uh, that's an interesting question. So what we'll yeah. say is that in reviewing everything, um, going back and reviewing the ad hoc committee meetings themselves, and then also um, the conversations that were had, the ad hoc elections committee uh, was implementing ideas to make sure that what happened in April was not repeated again in the city of Green Bay. And a lot of the issues that arose were, were because of the fact that there was such a limited amount of staff 
in the clerk's office to begin with, so implementing those were difficult. So, so there were inevitably communication breakdowns just because of how busy everybody was. And so other departments, like I said, were having to help with all sorts of, of different responsibilities normally um, held by the, by the clerk. And that included carrying out some of the requirements of the ad hoc committee. So looking for the different polling locations, looking for um, different types of PBE, um, looking for different type of different equipment, things of that nature. So I, I don't know that it's very characterized as either a hindrance or help. It's just there was additional work, and it would have been very difficult to expect that the clerk's office would have been able to handle that by themselves in addition to what was already being done by the clerk's office. Okay, that is why get... other staff were assisting. Well, I know that in previous years that there might have been 3,000 absentee ballots for election. They said the August 2020 primary saw 10,000, and this election saw 30, 33,000. So I understand the dynamics because of that. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to move on again. Thanks for your patience, all. Uh, the council unanimously approved the acceptance of the CTCL, the Center for Tech and Civic Life grant at council on 7-21-2020. CTCL is a 501c3 nonprofit. In your estimation, is the CTCL Democratic, Republican, or nonpartisan? By virtue of being a 501c3, the, they, the organization itself cannot be partisan. No active activities can be done which would cast, um, that, that would be considered politicking or, or um, electioneering or anything of that nature. So it has to be um, nonpartisan in that respect. And from our review, so you will recall that we were sued by um, client attorney Cardall um, alleging that specifically that it was a democratic leaning organization, but what the judge in that case, which was Judge Griesbach, what he determined is that there was no evidence of that, especially considering the fact that there were so many other municipalities just in Wisconsin. At that time, there was over 100 other municipalities in Wisconsin, red, blue, purple, you name it, um, that were receiving election grants, the same as the, the, the five largest cities in Wisconsin. I think that's one thing that needs to be brought forward. Folks were thinking the Wisconsin five, those communities were the ones that got the majority of not all of the money, but it sounded like there was over 100 other communities throughout Wisconsin, all different political entities, sizes and that, that did get that money, correct? Correct. So the Wisconsin five, it, the, the five that keeps being brought up, it's the five who was sued. The five right. municipalities that were, it was Milwaukee, Madison, Kenosha, Racine, and the city of Green Bay. And the reason that these cities were sued is because we we were, I believe, the first grant fees in Wisconsin. And in addition to that, we submitted the application jointly. Okay. I got a couple more and then I'll be done. Um, you may have touched on this already, but you said there were allegations that Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein was, was a Democrat. Those were pronounced over time. Uh, what were Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein's duties leading up to the election day and on election day itself? I know you already talked about that a little bit. It sounded like after, you know, after noon when he was told to just be an observer, uh, was there anything untoward before that? Uh, you said he was more or less setting up logistics for Central Count? That is correct. So he was providing assistance to the city in the nature of logistical stuff. He was helping coordinate, and then he was running his own data as far as the numbers of the ballots. Um, that literally just determining how far behind we're going to be um, and when we would expect to be um, complete with the based on how many we're going through the DS-450 versus the advertised number that it could actually um, count during uh, at optimal usage. So that was really the only thing that he was doing. I think the, the, the only other thing people recall him doing was telling staff, uh, the hotel staff, that they were free to set up for lunch. And then before that, he was acting as a, as a an advisor to the city 
and he would bring up recommendations. One of the recommendations he made was to change the flow of early voting at City Hall. Um, after we had that first day where there was a lot of, there was a, a longer wait time than anticipated. That was one of his recommendations was to change the flow. Um, he made a couple of other recommendations and when the city uh, thought they were good recommendations, we accepted them. Okay. Um, did Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein have any decision-making authority at Central Count? I think you already mentioned that, but I'd like to hear it again. He had no authority at Central Count, much less decision-making okay. authority. Did Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein represent any political party while working at Central Count? No, he was working for the National Vote at Home Institute, which is also a nonpartisan organization. Okay. Uh, you already talked about the keys. I think that was a big thing. I, I some of the alders may have sat in as I did to the to the uh, meeting on March 10th at the Capitol. It was three hours and 45 minutes. I sat through it, took 12 pages of notes, and I, I guess the question I had, and maybe to the, for the administration, was that uh, it was very, you know, there were Republicans, conservatives, et cetera. There are very few, if any, the Democrats or other party party members there. I would just want to some of the Democratic uh, folks, uh, some of the state reps did not go to the meeting, and I was just wondering why why uh, some of the Democratic folks did not go to that meeting or testify because, you know, we had three hours and 45 minutes of one side, and we just didn't get anything from the other side. So I'm just wondering if anybody can clarify that a little bit for me. Yeah, I mean, this is just me repeating what I've heard said publicly by um, by some of the representatives, but I think part of it was a lack of masking at the uh, committee hearing. Um, so some avoided it for health reasons, and then a number of them also had uh, con conflict conflicting committee hearings and so weren't able to attend. Um, but you're right in saying that it was solely Republicans in the, in the assembly who attended the hearing. Well, it yeah, and I understand some of that. It, it was just disappointing for me as an, as an observer, so to speak, to not try to hear the whole story. And that's why we a lot of times have to dig a little bit to try to get answers, but uh, I appreciate that answer. And the, the other point that, you know, the administration, we, we were not invited to participate or told about the hearing in advance. So that's that's why there was no well, participation from the, from the city's end. I, I guess I, that's another thing I wanted to point out. I was wondering if folks were invited or if they weren't, and you're saying that they were not invited. Okay. A couple more, I, I know I keep threatening. Um, well, let's see here, but uh, I think you already answered that, Mayor. I'll just talk a little bit just briefly on my experience at Central Count. I worked there from 6.15 till about 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, I was focused on sitting at a table with, with my partner uh, across the way, and we focused on getting 700 ballots, uh, absentee ballots cut, uh, registered, looked at, and moved forward so i would say for the most part from what i saw it worked out pretty well were there some glips here blips here and there i think so i mean a couple of times where i heard uh mr rivera wagner kind of shouting and pointing at some people and i don't know what was going on there could have been observers but i was focusing on my job so there are people that saying well mark why don't you get up and look and watch that was not my job my job was to count votes and i did that I did get up to look at the DS450 when Mr. You know, Director Grenier was running it. it. Seemed to be going pretty well, but there were some snafus with that. There were some glitches, and some of the ballots were piling up. But, and I was sitting close to that machine, so I didn't really see anybody coming around those votes. You know, they were you know they were kind of piling up in a box. I didn't see any of that. So, you know, I th I think um, you know, like I said, I a lot of us alders have got a lot of comments from both sides here and we just want the truth you know i know that's a tough word sometimes you know everybody has a different version of the truth but i think for now um i think i answered most asked most of the questions that that i needed to um and i'll, I'll hold off for now thank you thanks alder uh, we have had a, a fair amount of back and forth and q a with council we have a good number of folks who are waiting so just asking the question again 
if we would want to open the floor and then and then you know yeah, proceed with some more yeah, q &A. i have my light on to speak yep i know i'm just interjecting to suggest we uh, the idea of opening the floor if alders agree i would like to speak before you open the floor okay go ahead alder scan ah yes okay well uh, to me, this is very simple, and I'm, I feel like we're making a, a big brouhaha out of nothing. I mean, was a crime committed, yes or no? But what we're talking about here is illegal. If someone has evidence of a crime, anybody who's making these accusations, our first question to them should be, where's your evidence? If they got no evidence, we can shut them down. We can turn them to respond to them. I feel in some ways, I really appreciate staff's response in many ways, especially making all those documents available. I think that's really kind of cool. Uh, I'm not gonna go, but uh, uh, I feel we're giving too much credence to this. If a crime was committed, you need to report it. You've got evidence of a crime, you report that. If not, you're obstructing justice. You're part of uh, the conspiracy to, to commit a crime. If you've got evidence and you're not reporting it, and if you don't have evidence, fine shoot your mouth off we don't have to pay attention to that we are wasting a lot of time energy, money and energy on this i just feel like i'm, I'm being fluorided again oh don't bring that up I, it's the same thing we do not have to respond to every allegation out there and every we are not a watershed uh, for every conspiracy theory out there if someone committed a crime, report it to the proper authorities. We're not the authorities here. There are proper authorities to take this to. They can look at your evidence, weigh it up, and either say, sorry, you got nothing here, or there's enough here, we need to investigate, or they're going to come at us with uh, a charge, and then we need to respond to those things. Otherwise, I, I just feel we are wasting way too much time here on, on bogus crap, giving it credence that it doesn't deserve. It, it, it's very simple, not partisan either way. Either a crime was committed or it wasn't. You got evidence of that crime, go to the proper authorities and they can deal with it. We should be doing our city business. This isn't it, this isn't our city business. This is, this is a lot of nonsense. And I just feel, once again, we're getting caught up in this and I just feel we've been a little too overreactive, I feel, uh, we, we should be, Anybody coming with an accusation, first question should be, show me the evidence and then take it to the proper authorities. It's not us. So that's my two cents. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Brunette is next in the queue. I might ask you the same question if, you, if you'd like to open the floor here. Um, how many Alders are still behind me in the queue? Uh, we've got Johnson and Galvin for a second time, looks like. You know, I have, um, I actually cross off questions that I won't ask out of interest and respect everyone else who wants to speak. So I'd be happy to make a motion to open the floor and wait to ask my questions after. I'm fine with that. Okay. If, if I could real quick, and this uh, pertains to uh, Alder Stoyer. Um, he asked a question about uh, the money that we received and how it was spent. And I do remember uh, Alder Lafave had requested that. Uh, there was a document put out at our January 12th finance meeting. There's a copy um, on the city page. Uh, it's five and a half pages long, and it has a pretty detailed list of how $829,850.27 was spent um, for anybody that's interested. I also did reach out to the police chief, um, Chief Smith. As of today, nobody has filed any complaints at all with the Green Bay Police Department making any allegations at all of any crimes being committed during the November election. Uh, he's still waiting to hear back from the Sheriff's Department. And uh, District Attorney Lassay said multiple people have asked him to look into the election. He's still waiting for anyone to come forward with any kind of solid accusation or any kind of evidence. Uh, so he could start even start an investigation. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Alder Burnett, you had a motion. I, I'll be honest. Could I withdraw my motion? I, I, um, if it's just myself and Johnson at this point, I, I can probably ask these questions and get to the open floor within 20 minutes, likely. Okay, go ahead. All right, so it's withdrawn. All right, thank you. Uh, first question, first of all, before I do so, thank you to Attorney Chavez for uh, preparing that document and answering these questions. 
first question is if um, if the city is invited to testify at a future Wisconsin Assembly campaign and elections committee, will the city attorney, city clerk, and city mayor uh, participate? Yeah, certainly. Um, Just from my my point of view, I'd be happy to work with the committee if uh, if I were invited. Frank Chavez, would you as well? I was going to say, I can't speak for everybody else, but yes, absolutely. It is um, definitely important for the city to have legal representation anytime allegations are being locked at the city. Okay, thank you. That was a, kind of a follow-up to Alder Sawyer's question that I thought was uh, needing to be answered. On the list, did Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein offer to cure absentee ballots? He did. He and I shouldn't say he offered to cure absentee balance. He asked if um, the clerk's office needed assistance from his organization in doing that. It was declined, and he never. The how would the organization um, cure ballots? They would so say curing ballots. Is Curing ballots is a very specific procedure. It involves ensuring the, the envelope itself that it arrives in has met the requirements. So there are state standards um, when it comes to curing, curing ballots and really what it is is curing envelopes. Is it uh, a state law or election law for a person who cures ballots to be a state resident or elector of the state? That I don't know. Um, why do you believe Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein felt comfortable enough to ask that question? Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein was providing assistance, however, uh, the assistance needed to be provided. It was me from all the emails that I've reviewed that the role that the consultants were taking was whatever assistance the city needed, we just needed to ask. So one of the big things that the clerk's office was focusing on at that time was curing ballots. And so my understanding is that he offered the organization needed. Okay, prior to being invited or allowed at Central Count on election day, did Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein receive training, be provided a memo or sign an agreement from or with the city as to what he would be allowed to do that day and what activities would be prohibited? Are you asking if there was like a, a list of duties? Like a contract and agreement. Mr. Rubenstein, this is what you are allowed to do today. Mr. Rubenstein, this is what you are not allowed to do today. Was that provided by no. the staff? What can happen at Central Count is pretty much dictated by state law. Um, as I stated before, the, the person in charge is the chief inspector. In this, this case, it was Jamie Fugge. And so Mr. Rubenstein's um, role, and everybody basically knew working with him was that he was in an advisory capacity only. And so there wasn't an expectation as to him doing anything in addition to that. Like all of the... Um, the work that needed to be completed had already been, so there wasn't a work assigned to Mr. Rubenstein. Uh, while Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein was present at Central Count, did he have any communication with election officials or consultants at Central Counts in the municipalities of Madison, Milwaukee, Racine, or Kenosha? I don't know that. Uh, what is the status, and I had some uh, correspondence with Attorney Bunker to do the, the, the demand of the law office at this point. I understand that she could not give me the answer last week, and, and I'm fine with that, Attorney Chavez, but perhaps you have the answer. What is the status of unfilled election-related open records requests? How many do we have outstanding that you're aware of? It's not many. So we've received like 75, and there's probably like nine that are in some form unfulfilled, whether it's pending because you're waiting for additional information from the requester or we're still going through emails or whatever it may be. It's, it's a very small number. And I, and I think I want to say it's more like two or three that we actually are able to fill without additional information from the, um, from the requester themselves before we can move forward. 
Okay, so there are, just for full disclosure, there are a few, so thank you. Um, on Friday, a series of open records requests were posted on the city's website for the sake of desired transparency, which I like. Uh, some I requested by the open records were posted, and I know we did that to you know, clear some misconceptions. What are those documents that the city decided to post to the website that were not specifically asked for? The items that were added to the disclosures, um, or to the website, I should say, were the contract with KI and the absentee ballot chain of custody log showing Director Ellen Becker's and myself's initials, confirming that we had been the ones who uh, um, checked the ballots out of, of City Hall and received them at KI and vice versa. Maybe like, um, were there probably five to 10 documents or, or were there more? There were two documents that were added to that. Oh, thank you. All right. I, I didn't know if there were multi-part documents. Um, has there been, um, okay, so in the February 2nd complaint regarding former clerk Teske, Director Falls referenced a December 14th email from former clerk Teske. Uh, has that, that email exchange from December, let's just say 10th through 18th, been requested by an open records request? Um, I do not know exactly what was requested. I do know that the um, resignation letters have been requested, as has the uh, um, document prepared by Director Fault. Okay, but you're not aware if the uh, document from com communication from December 8, 10th through 18th between those two parties was released or requested? I couldn't dig through. I'm not okay. He referenced the email. I'm not it's released or was requested or is even releasable. Um, employee records or matters related to personnel matters um, go through a, an entirely separate uh, analysis before they get released. And I'm not the one who processes our records requests. Um, Deputy Director, I'm sorry, Deputy Attorney Bunker is the one who does those. So she would be able to provide better determination as to what has been requested. I know generally what is requested, but I don't actually process the records request. Okay, thank you, uh, fair enough. Um, two questions left. Uh, Ms. Sandy Juno, she served two four-year terms in the Constitutional Office of Brown County Clerk. Uh, she commented that of the 24 municipalities in Brown County, only Green Bay, in her words, went quote unquote rogue. In comparison to past November elections, did Green Bay have less engagement with the Brown County Clerk's Office before, during, and after the November ele uh, election? I can't speak for the Clerk's Office. What I can tell you is that my understanding of the interactions between the County Clerk and the City Clerk have always been minimal. Um, the There have been numerous instances where our um, former clerk was critical of the uh, county clerk and vice versa. And so I don't know how much interaction the two of them had on a regular basis. So I wouldn't be able to tell you with you know, all certainty that it improved or declined, but my understanding is that the, it, that was pretty much par for the course as far as the end of the two of them. Thank you, Attorney Chavez. Last question, did you uh, personally watch the entire hearing of the Wisconsin Assembly Campaign and Elections Committee? I watched all at the very beginning. Um, I had another meeting and so I hopped on as soon as I, I um, was able to. I missed the very first part where Attorney Carl Cardall went through his um, his slides, but those were provided to me later. Or I shouldn't say the slides. A synopsis of the slides was provided to me later. I also had um, Attorney Mather uh, watch the hearing as well, including the portions provided by um, at the very beginning regarding Attorney Cardell's testimony. And uh, from what was stated, what, from what I watched, as well as what Attorney Mather watched, it was very, very um, close to the allegations and the arguments that were made in the lawsuit that we had defended previously, which Attorney Mather had assisted me with substantially. Yeah, thank you for that comment. I, you know, I watched it and it was quite alarming. You know, I watched it, uh, 
be honest, I watched it twice in full and three, three or four times certain parts. So a lot of that is shocking. And, you know, you know, several hour hearing, there's a lot of things that were said and it's hard for us to sift through it. And I know, I know you prepared a document and I look forward to reading the final version of that document because I read the draft earlier yesterday. Um, but the, the, the specific question, does the mayor's office, clerk's office and law office dispute all the testimony of that March 10th hearing? Because there are some people in the community that say, well, that's just a, you know, I think someone here in the city administration called it a Stalinist Cho trial and a it's still a government meeting of a higher level of government. So I want to know, is everything in that committee being disputed as nonsense or were there some things in that hearing that the city uh, would believe to be true at this point? So the one thing that, um, and, and uh, James Hugh and I discussed this earlier today, um, she, one thing that was brought up was that the front of the ballots were being looked at at central count. That is true, but that is because there are requirements that have to be met in order for those to be counted. Like, for example, you're making sure that the clerk's initials appear on it, um, and you are making sure, I believe there's, there's no more information to look for. But either way, those are things that you're supposed to look at on, on the front. You're not checking to see how people voted. You're, you're making sure that the ballot itself has the, the necessary um, documentation for it to be counted. So yes, that, that was factual, but the way it was presented was not. Um, there are recitations of the law. I don't know that I would necessarily argue with those. I think that they got the facts wrong. If everything that they alleged we did, we had done, they're right. Those have been violations of the law, but we didn't do those. Um, there were a number of allegations of, you know, poor customer service, essentially, and disagreements about how maybe they felt things should have happened. But again, those aren't necessarily indicative of anything that, that happened. It's just they didn't really necessarily get along with the person and felt that maybe customer service wasn't where it should have been. So I, I can't say that anything that was brought up or that everything that brought up was not true. But everything that was brought up that would actually affect the integrity of the election was not was not true. Uh, Attorney Chavez, I suspect that there are going to be a con continuation of articles that are going to be released. And the very first article that was released, uh, I think it was Wisconsin Spotlight, a week ago today, I believe, is when this all started. Uh, the city put on the website rather quickly on the mayor's page and the city's response, and then it was shared to the general government response. Today, there were two articles I noticed published. One, I believe, was Wisconsin Spotlight, and the other was uh, the Washington Examiner. And they, uh, they, the latest story is that uh, the city was approached the day before the election from a representative of one of the uh, political parties in the state of Wisconsin, asking them, asking the city to, uh, the city had decided to close the ballot, uh, the, um, the drop boxes at eight o'clock. And they claim in this article, these articles that the, the political party representative asked the city seven o'clock and claimed that the city would be, would have a 15% chance of winning a lawsuit and possibly disenfranchising. They said hundreds, and this is why, you know, some of these articles you gotta really look at because they said hundreds of thousands were really, if you look, it was hundreds, two thousands or something. So anyways, the, the point I'm getting at, did, did the city have inter, any interaction with a state level political party about uh, t taking closing the, the mail, the drop boxes an hour earlier than what the city had already planned? So the city of Green Bay has had numerous people threaten lawsuits against us for the cause of the election since April. And so I wouldn't, I couldn't tell you whether or not anything affected anything that we did. Instead, what I can tell you is that each time something was brought up, we, did, we looked at it and determined what, what the actual law stated and what would, um, what the proper approach was based on our reading of the law. And so ultimately it was determined that the law stated anything received by the clerk by eight o'clock had to be accepted and that is exactly what we did. I say, you know, based, I read the email, it just, 
to me, it seemed like they were kind of putting a little pressure on the city. Did you feel that way at all? Like they were I trying didn't. to. So okay. there were actually discussions about this going back and forth um, about whether or not we should close it early. Um, in fact, I want to say that Mr. Rubenstein was one of the ones recommending that we close it early. Um, and uh, we decided against it because we were following the letter. So, no, I, I wouldn't say that there was any undue pressure um, or that we were folding to anybody's requirements or anything like that. I would say that what we did is we looked at the letter of the law, we consulted with the WEC, we reached out to see what other municipal attorneys were doing across the state and then made an independent determination as to what was the right decision for the city. You find it was odd that they, and again, just sharing what the article stated, you know, take it for what it's worth. I'm just trying to understand. You find it odd that they copied numerous members, higher up officials within that political party when they corresponded with the city? They had plenty of people that were carbon copied as part of a political party. I couldn't answer that. I'll be honest with you. I'm not very well versed with who the important people in the parties are in Wisconsin. Yeah, I mean, at the time, I, I could completely understand that. But of course, hindsight being 2020, it creates suspicion when you have, you know, journalists now looking at who was copied in the email. So that's all. Thank you. You've been, uh, um, you answered my questions. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So Alder, <clears throat> Alder Johnson. Hey, Mayor. Um, Director, uh, Attorney Chavez, um, when we, when there was a proposal brought before council to approve funding for uh, essentially a PR campaign, one of uh, the addendums that was put onto that request was that um, the PR firm would provide a report back to city council. To your knowledge, has that firm provided that report? I do not know that. That would not have come to my office um, to find out about that, but I don't know that. Would that be perhaps a question for Clerk, Clerk Jeffries? Um, thank you, Alder. There was, we did have a follow-up meeting with the PR firm. Um, I would need to go back into my records to see if there was a follow-up report. I believe we did get some um, consumables from them. Um, but I would. Okay. Uh, Attorney Shaw, and if you could do that, Clerk Jeffries, because that was uh, one of the requirements that we did put uh, on the approval of that. So I would love to, to be able to see that report at some point. Um, Attorney Chavez, um, this is a question that was presented to me, and I don't know the answer. Um, the state statute requires city council to approve an interim clerk. An inter so the appointment of a clerk is it's appointed by the mayor, confirmed by the council, and we have done that in the past. We've had to assign somebody to a deputy position so that um, they could fill positions in the past. But what we've always, what we've had since then, and this happened a few years ago when somebody was out, I don't know if they were busy or out sick, and then um, somebody else went out sick for a while or something to that effect. I don't recall the exact circumstances, but since then we've always had a deputy clerk assigned um, responsibility so that we will have that second person always available. And that, that for the last, I don't know how many years, it's been two years maybe, has been Kim Lake. Okay, so city council, I'm trying to recollect because I unfortunately I don't remember. Um, city council, do we approve uh, the deputy clerk when that's appointed? Uh, no, I believe under statute that is somebody that is designated at the clerk level. I'll have to verify that. But generally, the the clerk, the, the appointed party is the main department head, essentially, the, the appointed official, and then the deputy is, is selected by the, that person themselves. Okay. Um Question specifically related to the state hearing. Admittedly, I did not have an opportunity to watch that that hearing, though I've certainly read plenty of reports about it. Um, do you know, did the scope of that hearing, did it include just the August and November elections or did it also include the April? 
So it's really unclear what the intent of that hearing was supposed to be because the vast majority of what, so there were, there were the things that were brought up by Attorney Cardall, which related almost exclusively to the November election because of the CPCL grant. I'm sure that that also would implicate August. And then there was the testimony from the different, the, the resident witnesses who were acting as election observers that really pertained almost exclusively to the November election from former county clerk Juno that brought us primarily stuff related to April and then talking about the elections from there on out. So it was a little bit of everything. So I'm not really sure what the scope of it was intended to be, but it, it was a little bit of everything. So that, that particular committee then, um, of course, you've acknowledged that they did not invite you to testify, but did they give you any type of indication whatsoever uh, what they were trying to uncover or achieve through that hearing? No, I can't speak for any other members of the, of the city, but generally any time the city will be under the under question, it should at the very least come to the clerk, the clerk, the city attorney, and that we would provide representation at any type of hearing. I've never received anything to this date indicating that the city was even supposed to be. Like I found about, out about this from, I think, the news article. Okay. Um, we, we've talked about the move to Central Count, and I, I, I know it's been referenced that it was approved uh, by both parties. Was that, uh, were those local political parties that approved that, state political parties? Something else? They were local. They were the local parties, yes. Okay, and I presume it was the two, uh, the primary parties, Republicans and Democrats? It was a, it was a letter from the, res the respective chairs of the state parties. Oh, thank okay. you, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, and then, of course, um, following that decision, uh, you did notify Wisconsin Elections Commission of your desire to move that, and they confirmed uh, and, and provided approval to do so, is that correct? The WEC requires, the state law requires that we consult with WEC before we make any changes to central count. And so we consulted with them and they indicated that they did not actually have to approve of what we did. We have to consult with them to address any concerns that they had and they did not have any. Okay, good, thank you. Um, the YouTube video that was uh, provided, uh, we did a live broadcast that I believe was was quite lengthy, um, but to my knowledge, uh, it was not archived. Uh, could someone please comment on that? That would be a question for IP, um, but yes, we did live stream it. Okay, does, does anybody, is, is IT on the phone that could comment on why that wasn't archived? Or is it archived and, and we just don't know? I can comment on that. Um, <clears throat> The video stream lasted longer than what YouTube uh, allows us to archive. We had a 22 hour, four, vi uh, four videos going at one time, 22 hours long. And uh, they only archived, I think only to 12 hours. I can't be certain with that, but yeah. And that's why it was not archived on YouTube. Okay, so do we know offhand, Director Horanek, if, if, you know, when, when you exceed that time limit, um, does YouTube give you the option to archive that first 12 hours or whatever that time limit is? I do not know that directly offhand. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Um, at one point we talked about uh, Clerk Teske um, having participated on the ad hoc committee, full participant of that committee until her uh, leave of absence. The way the ad hoc committee was set up, she was a member of the, she was one of the nine members of the committee. Okay, and then when, when Clerk Teske uh, took her leave of absence, was interim clerk, wait, did she then automatically become a member of that committee? She would assume the duty, so yes, she would have automatically been a, a, meet, a, a member of that committee. Okay. Um, and then, Attorney Chavez, you referenced uh, the report earlier that you were working on. 
Um, however, I didn't catch this, and if you said it, please uh, forgive the redundancy, um, but do you have a timeline of when that report will be complete? Um, yes and no. Um, it ultimately depends on whether or not this, that there are additional things that they would like um, added to the report. Um, if the information that I've preliminarily given to you is satisfactory, I can probably finalize that pretty soon. I'm waiting for um, information from a couple more people before I can finalize things. And then I do need to incorporate um, the interviews I've had with certain staff, um, just confirming what their um, what their recollections were, and those need to be incorporated in. So it ultimately depends on on what this council's pleasure is. So if if the if what I've been providing to you so far is satisfactory, I can probably have it ready for you um, to release to the public at the end of this week. Okay, uh, and then just. It, um it, not a question, but a statement, it, because uh, it, it was raised about how, uh, you know, if there's a crime, um, you know, that that position should obviously be laid out and should go to the proper authorities. But, you know, one of the things I want to point out is that I think that there's this assumption that the only reason we're having this discussion is because a crime occurred. And, and I think that there are other reasons why you want to have this type of public conversation. Um, you know, you could be wanting to look for the ability to improve a process. Um, you could be looking at things like election reform, and while I would certainly agree that if a crime occurred, it absolutely should be going to the right authorities, um, but I do think that there are a lot of questions that the public has, and this is the appropriate forum for us to be asking these questions, to be receiving those answers, and to perhaps taking this information in a way um, that we can make changes to make that election process run more smoothly. So, direct, uh, Alder Scannell, I can see you don't agree with me, and that's okay. We'll agree to disagree, and we'll both agree that bees are still wonderful. So, uh, <laughs> that's all, Mayor. Thank you. Make a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> go ahead. Well, oh, Mayor, go ahead. Go ahead, Alder Brunette. I was going to make a motion, but Alder Weary has his hand raised. So Yeah, I couldn't. <clears throat> My button was impressed. I don't know if it's not. No, you're, you're in the queue here. I think the question oh, yeah. is whether or not we wanted to open the floor. Alder Weary, are you Mine'll okay? Be quick. Mine will be real quick. Okay, go ahead. That way we'll have all our questions, I think, out of the way, or most of them. Thank you. Um, I appreciate a lot of good questions already. Most of them have been crossed off. Um, just wanted to follow back quickly on that uh, 150000 that went to the PR firm, because really, back when we approved the grant, uh, the part it was unanimous, but then when it actually came back with the detail, it was unanimous to take the money for the equipment and for the pay and for the protective equipment, but it was the PR part that was, I think, a nine to three vote. And I think it passed because Alderman Johnson put in uh, the rider that we be given a report of exactly <clears throat> how the money was spent and a complete breakdown of that. Uh, I had asked actually um, Clerk Jeffries on, on February 12th, do we have the report uh, on the money received for the election, looking for a breakdown of where the money was spent what groups, organizations, or contracts were given to handle various parts of the election, and what did the groups do with the money? And I was sent back a link to the committee, which really just had kind of an accounting breakdown of dollars and where it was spent. It wasn't at all uh, the report we were looking for. And so I, can we be, be assured that we're going to get that? Because that was a qualifier for taking that money. Clerk Jeffries? Certainly. Okay. So that's a yes. Sorry. Right. Thank you. Um, and Alder Johnson uh, touched on this. And I appreciate um, Attorney Chavez, the initial report that you put out. You know, looks like you put a lot of work into that. It's not complete yet, obviously. Um, I think you've stated a couple times that there's a number of people you'd like to speak with, including Kim Wade, WEC. Um, I, I would also recommend that you at least reach out to Chris Teske and Sir Comment. If we're going to do a report, let's get their comments and concerns as well. So I, I would like to hear that, if that's all right. Attorney? I can reach out to them. Okay. And then um, lastly, and, and I think this one's just, it's, an, it's important. Um, earlier, Mayor Genrich dismissed uh, Clerk Sandy Juno's comments and concerns 
as she has an axe to grind and it, and she is an extreme right wing activist. Um, attorney, is that also the city of Green Bay opinion? Uh, I, I guess I don't understand the question. Are you asking me if that was a city post? Uh, no, is that also uh, an opinion would, held by the city? I would ask for a point of order. We're supposed to be discussing the allegations pertaining to the 2020 yep. election. And, and I not, am not uh, about Alder the Galvin. Mayor's, Alder Galvin, one of opinions. the concerns brought up, please, you don't have the floor. One of the concerns brought up was from Brown County Clerk, Sandy Juno. Okay. She testified at the legislature. All right. And when asked about that today on a radio show, our mayor said, yeah, he has an ax to grind. She's an extreme white ring activist. Now, I just want to know, is that our city's position or is that just an individual's position? Attorney? And if you could explain to me how that addresses the allegations against the city. Well, are, are, is the city saying that Alder, she's some kook Alder, that we shouldn't Alder listen Weary. to? Alder Weary, I'm an independently elected official and I'm free okay. to speak on my own behalf. Yes, and you so can. I'm still asking the attorney though, is that the city of Green Bay's opinion? It's not. It's I'm my not opinion. asking you, Mr. It's, it's not a question. It's not I'm a asking question. the attorney. It's, it's not a question for the city attorney. Uh, it is, because I'm asking it. <laughs> it's not. Uh, city attorney Chavez, is that the city of Green Bay's opinion? The op official opinion of the city of Green Bay is whatever this council decides per a vote. So the opinions that were put out on the web uh, on Facebook, the city council never weighed in on any of those. So you didn't wait for the city council on any of those opinions, but this one you're going to wait. I'm just trying to figure out when something's put on the city website as the official announcement from the city, it's really not the city, it's the mayor and staff, right? I just, so we separate that. Announcements that come out from the city come from the mayor's office. Explanations of fact came from my office. Okay, and, and uh, the comments regarding Sandy Juno did not come from the city. They came from one individual. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Dorf, and then maybe we can open the floor. Yeah, I will say that at the end. I just wanted to make sure something was really clear with it, something Alder Johnson had asked, because I was on the Ad Hoc Elections Committee and I attended every meeting. And yes, um, Chris Teske did attend those meetings, and Kim Waite usually attended as well. But by the time that Kim Waite Became, um, our last meeting was on 9 10 20. So that was in, in mid September. That was the last time we formally met. As a, so um, it wouldn't be accurate to say that she attended the committee after she became the clerk because we didn't have any more committee meetings. We were there then um, at if, if Clerk Teske wanted us to meet. We said we would come back at any time, but by that time, we had found the polling places, we had found the poll workers, we had done everything in our power to help and support the clerk's office. And at that point, there was nothing more that the ad hoc committee could really do. So I just wanna make sure that was clear, okay? And, and then um, I just wanted to make sure it's clear that we all know that um, the Brown County clerk was the chair of the Brown County Republican Party at one point before she became Brown County clerk. I think um, Alder Weir is real interested in Sandy Juno's background, so I thought let me bring that up. Thank you. I'd like now, now I'd like to make a second, but I'd like to comment on that, Mayor, if I could. Go ahead. First, though, I think it's completely inappropriate for Alder Dorf to interject partisan politics. Really, we're trying to keep it separate from partisanship and you brought it in. I think you're the first person who brought up the partisan mm -hmm. meaning of somebody. I think it's deeply inappropriate if we're trying to be non-biased, non-partisan like we are as a government body, keep that partisan crap out of it. it, it the far me. right doesn't mean anything. When Alder Weary brought up the far right, that didn't mean anything. He was, he, commenting all, all, he was commenting on comments that the mayor made on a radio station this morning, Alder Dorf. Oh, so that doesn't count because yes. Alder Weary said Alders, 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 Alders. Let's the minimize, let's, let's please, let's right, please so, minimize the crosstalk and open the floor and get to our citizenry. Uh, I apologize, uh, your honor. Mayor Genrick, I, I would like to uh, ask you, your, you, this is your prerogative as chair. I don't think people should be limited to a few minutes to speak. 
I would hope that you would allow people at a minimum to speak five to 10 minutes. You know, this, this, this subject is of no, utmost. I, yeah, I appreciate the sentiment, but we're going to keep it to two minutes tonight. You're only going to hear from the public at a time on election integrity. Are I you agree. kidding? You're, you're, you're out of line. You are completely out of line to hear from the public for two minutes at a time. Completely. I'll second it. If there's a motion, I'll second it. Uh, Attorney Chavez, can can I make a motion from from this position as alder to to set the limit to five minutes per speaker? The council could suspend the rules to change the amount of time the speakers are allowed to speak. I would like to make it more than five minutes, but I'll, I'd like to motion to suspend the rules to allow speakers of all opinions, of all persuasions, of all input from all corners of this city to speak um, at a minimum of five minutes. Second. I'd like to amend the motion to make it three minutes. I'll second that. Second. The motion has been made and seconded by Alder Brunette. Uh, seconded by Alder Weary, an amendment has been made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Galvin to limit comments to three minutes discussion. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> I mean, what a pittance you're throwing to the people, the people who, who we who own this government, by the way, that you're only going to let them speak to three minutes when they were watching this hearing for the last two minute, two hours. This is how you treat the public who this government owns to that we're only going to hear from them for three minutes. What a joke this is. Alder Brunette, I, I think you'll recall that I attempted to open the floor at, at numerous points and you proceeded to move forward with your comments. You were relevant for two up, minutes. And take you, up You wanted to open the floor for two minutes. All right, whatever. Three minutes. Okay, so we have an amendment on the floor. I, I would Mr. like to Mayor. speak to that. Then seconded Alder Lefebvre. Can I make a comment? We had uh, in... Uh, Alder Stoyer and Alder um, Stevens can also um, attest to this. We went through a lot with the fluoride, and I believe we set it at three minute comments. So, no, three minutes I think is enough time to give people to speak, uh, be precise, and don't repeat things that others talk. Put your points out, and you should be able to come across in three minutes. I think is more than enough time. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Lefebvre. Alder Weary? I, I would remind Alder Lefebvre that this never went to a committee. So they never had a previous chance at one of our committees to talk about this. Uh, I'm going to vote no on the three minutes and then go back to the original motion. I encourage people to do that. Thank you. OK, seeing no further comments, we'll okay. have uh, Alder Scannell, go ahead. Just, uh, I appreciate the two minutes. I, honestness, I think two minutes is more than enough mm -hmm. on this issue. I think this is a lot of conspiracy crap. Honest to God, we are not a clearinghouse. If someone's got evidence, fine. What, what are we doing here? This has got nothing to do with us. You're talking about integrity. The integrity is on the accuser. If they've got that, where's their integrity? This is, this is a waste of our, this is not good governance. It's a waste of our time, money, and energy. It's just bad governance. And this is not an issue that we need to be a clearinghouse for. Uh, two minutes, I like two minutes. Thanks, Alder. There is an amendment on the floor to uh, limit public comments to three minutes. Seeing no further comments, all Mr. in favor? Stoyer. Mr. Stoyer. Alder Stoyer, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. Um, you know, I think part of this, and Alder Burnett to bring up a good point, we are, the citizens elected us. They technically are our boss. You know, they they want to hear, they want to be able to speak. Now, I think last, we, we didn't open the floor one time. We were all worried that, oh boy, it's gonna be another fluoride type of thing. And it only took maybe 15 minutes. So I'm not sure how many people are out in the queue, but I think it's important that they have their opportunity to speak. And I would think most people can probably talk within two or three minutes on their own merit. But, you know, to say you can only talk two minutes and that's it. I mean, that's not democracy. So I, I really, you know, even though I didn't want to sit through five hours of fluoride testimony, we did it. And we, you know, the both sides were satisfied that we were fair about it. And that's all. People just want to be heard. And the fact is we had so many closed session meetings, so many citizens felt left out. So I think it's important that we open the floor 
they want to speak for four and a half minutes, let them. That's my take. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any further comments on the amendment? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, all opposed, nay? Nay. No. We will use the board on the amendment to limit public comment to three minutes. <clears throat> Mr. Burnett, please vote. I went to sleep. Um, I am a no, it just came up. Thank you. And that passes seven to five. So that was an amendment to the suspension of the rules. So I'll uh, entertain a motion to adopt. Move to adopt. Second. Second. Motion made by Elder Dorf, seconded by Elder Gerlach. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Time limit is three minutes from members of the public. So please just Remember to state your name and address for the council. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Alder Lefebvre. I was wondering if I can make a motion that if somebody, uh, they speak for three minutes and uh, then they think of something later, can they go back in the queue and can speak again? Uh, customarily, that's not how things work. Can I make a motion to that we can do that for the, for, for tonight? Certainly could. I'll second that if it's in order. Great idea, Alder Lefebvre. Let's hear from the people. Okay. Uh, motion has been made to allow four people to come back in the queue for an additional three minutes. Uh, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay? Nay. 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 Appears as though the ayes have it. Um, so uh, three minutes and please, you know, try to stick to that three minutes. We've got a lot of people who are interested in speaking and, um, you know, brevity is the soul of wit folks. So, uh, I think you'll be able to, uh, you know, hit on just about everything you'd like in three minutes. Mayor, could I make a 10 second comment? So with, uh, Alder, we really need to move forward. All right. That's fine. So the floor is open. Please state your name and address. Thank you. First, we have John Shelton. If you could please state your name and address. And the timer will start after you state that. Yeah, hi, every, hi everybody. Uh, John Shelton, uh, 1019 Emily Street. Um, I'm a uh, college professor at UW-Green Bay and also a member of my union, UW-Green Bay United. And uh, as a college professor, I was actually hoping to have, I don't know, like 25, 30 minutes to talk about this, but I, I guess I'll make do with three, if that's okay with everybody. Um, I, I want to urge the Common Council to pass this resolution, you know, as we've heard tonight and I've been listening to this for quite some time. This whole discussion is nothing else but a desperate effort to destabilize our democracy. That's all. I'm not going to waste any more time tonight addressing these utterly ridiculous accusations about the election. What I am going to do, because I'm a historian, is lay out why this bogus conversation is so dangerous. So as a historian, I know that our nation was built on really a very simple ideal. We make decisions democratically and we elect those to represent us. Across time, Americans from the revolutionaries in 1776 who would have been hanged had they lost the war against the British, to women like Alice Paul who went to jail and launched the hunger strike for women's right to vote, to the African-American civil rights protesters who marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama a little more than 56 years ago, knowing that white supremacists might very well kill them, Americans have fought for a simple principle that every person gets to have their vote count and no one is entitled to hold public office without the most votes from the most people. What's happened in this state over the past two weeks is an insult. It truly is an insult and a disgrace to the very foundation of what it means to be an American. Just as the insurrectionists did on January 6th, those people who hated democracy so much that they were willing to defile the people's house in our capital, 
The legislators in Madison who have made up these baseless conspiracy theories about the free and fair election in Green Bay this past November, they insult the memory of Thomas Jefferson, Alice Paul, John Lewis, and so many others who have risked their lives to make our nation freer and more democratic. That's why my union put together an open letter for all those who supported the work of the mayor and his team and the hundreds of heroic poll workers who administered this election. Within just a few days, we had over 200 people sign on and those who signed on did so to make a simple point. We will not let those who would put their partisan interests above our nation undermine our democracy. If there's anything worth fighting for, it's the idea that the people of this nation elect their leaders and that a small group of opportunists will never get away with reinstituting the tyranny that so many Americans before us worked to confine to the dustbin of history. That's why I'm asking you to stand with us and everybody who signed that letter to stand with democracy by passing this resolution. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Shelton. Next, we have Lou Ann Crowder. If you could just state your name and address for the record, and your time will start after that. My name is Luann Crowder, and I live at 818 South Roosevelt Street. I volunteered with Brown County Covo pre-pandemic, helping nursing home residents register to vote and doing the same at library schools and at the Green Bay Voting Mural. My husband, Jim Wall, and I were poll workers for the April and November 2020 elections. We received wonderful training and were honored to be able to, to serve. We all did an amazing job in the middle of a pandemic. I especially valued my time at City Hall during early voting for the fall election. Those voters were so grateful to the City of Green Bay for making early voting possible and eager and excited to participate in their democracy. I was honored that I was able to help. We were even able to offer voting without leaving your car. Many people were first time voters and at and I called out to my fellow workers that we had a first timer and we applauded. I told them that there was a huge mural for selfies just outside the door so that they could document their experience after they submitted their ballots. Voters were delighted to cheer they, after they submitted their ballots, a specially designed I voted sticker, and so very gracious about having to wait in line as many had to do if they were not already registered. At the poll site in November, I was so proud that Wisconsin has same day registration, as many citizens took full advantage of that opportunity. One young man came to the table for a ballot and I had to tell him he was not registered. I told him he could get in another line and register right then. He came back later and said that he had had to go home to get the proper documentation so that he could register. He was a happy and successful voter. No one could have come away from such an experience without a profound respect for the way that our Wisconsin voting traditions were observed and honored. Please vote to defend Green Bay's elections, the voters, the poll workers, and the city hall staff who worked so diligently to make November's elections so successful in the midst of a pandemic. This was a safe, secure, and competently conducted election. I know because I was there. Thank you. Thank you. Next in the queue, it looks like we have Ned Dorf. If you could just state your name and address for the record and your time will start after us. Ned Dorf, 1321 Emily Street. Um, my students are a little younger than John, so three minutes is kind of a luxury for a attention span of my audience. Um, I volunteered on election day, as did many of you, and I'm here to speak against what has become a growing culture of baseless conspiracy theory. Frequent spurious accusations have eroded our confidence in accurate information and have us constantly and unproductively retreating to our own camps. It shouldn't be this way, and it does not have to be this way. This culture of baseless conspiracy is neither novel, nor cute, nor intelligent. Rather, it is both lazy and dangerous. It feeds our worst impulses. 
What I see in these conspiracies about November are not honest questions or a genuine attempt to hold our elected officials and government staff accountable. I am disheartened by the prevalence of and weight given to claims unsupported by evidence about November's election. It has been a stain on our democracy from the national down to the local levels. In Wisconsin, we even have a sitting U.S. Senator who continues to trumpet the idea that the Capitol insurrectionists were true patriots. These violent rioters acted on the falsehood that our November election was tampered with, the same conspiracy we're discussing tonight. That same U.S. Senator has gone further and reaffirmed the long ties between this culture of conspiracy and the violent culture of white supremacy, think birtherism, by stating that had it been Black Lives Matter protesters instead of the violent white supremacists who did storm the Capitol, then he would have been concerned. <clears throat> like you, I often try to divorce the ugliness of national politics from what is going on in our city. I think we do better as a city than most of our national politicians do. But our senator's statement belies some of the ill will that has filtered down into our local discussion. The conspiracy movement is inextricably tied with the white supremacist movement as evidenced by multiple arrests of QAnon adherents and white nationalists following the riot at the U.S. Capitol. These ideologies are infecting every facet of our society, so please give their evangelists a strong rebuke tonight with your vote. I was a volunteer on November's election day in Green Bay, locking and watching a drop box. My role was small, but I served with honesty and the city workers, volunteers, and elected officials with whom I interacted throughout the process also served with honesty and integrity. I personally express solidarity with those who served in this election, and I urge the council to support the resolution expressing confidence in the way our city handled November's election. Thank you, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'd like to talk about fluoride with my last five seconds. Just <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dorf. Okay, if there's anyone wishing to speak on this item, if they would just raise their hand in Zoom, please. Is anyone there? Hello? Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm wondering, I don't know if there's anybody ahead of me, but I have no way to raise my hand except for unmute myself. Okay, that is fine. If you could just state your name and address for the record, and we'll have you next to speak. Thank you. Okay, thank you. My name is Andrea Johnson, and I live at 387 Windward Road in Green Bay. Um, I have several questions. Um, I would like to know, um, at Central Count, why was there no training for the poll workers? Please don't eat up my three minutes in consideration, please. Mayor, could I answer that a little bit? Well, I mean, typically, just so members of the public know, this is not a running Q&A. Right. It's really an opportunity for you to offer your comments for council. Oh, so it's only comments. I can't get any answers? Right. Oh, okay. Then let me list my questions, please. All right. First, how was um, Michael Spitzer Rubenstein getting information for his logistics? Who, uh, um, since we have $700,000 left from the grant money, why did we rely on YouTube to give us um, video time? Why did we not create our own and, and publish it somewhere else? We had plenty of money to do that. Um, why was there no training for central count? Um, what happened to the ballots once they were through the machine? Did they actually make it to the machine? Did they stay in the machine or did were they pulled out of the machine and then set on a table? Um, where was the recording for central count kept? Is there a re recording that's whatever was recorded on YouTube? Is that saved somewhere on a thumb drive somewhere so that the city can view it? Or is that completely absent? At any time, was it okay for city staff to stamp or validate a ballot envelope 
um, with the city's address at central count. Um, why was the um, mail, the ballot opening machine not set up prior to if Michael Spitzer Rubenstein and or staff had access to central count and set up the tables? Why was at least one of the ballot opening machines not even set up? Um, where, what was the age of the poll workers allowed? There were some teenagers there. Um, who decided the polls would go to two back in April? Was that you, Mr. Mayor? And why? That's a question. I, I realize COVID, but COVID or not, we still have a democracy to run. Um, my vote and my family's votes were disenfranchised. We received our absentee ballots in June. We stood in line, but could not wait three and a half hours for various reasons. So we couldn't vote in April. So that um, that is uh, a part of the democracy that the previous gentleman um, claimed that we, we should protect and, and absolutely we should, but there's some disenfranchising that happened in, in April. How many alders were at central count? And thank you, that was time. Much. Okay, so next we have Renee. I will lower your hand if you could just state your name and address for the record and your time will start once you state your name and address, please. Um, that's Renee Gash. I live at 719 Lewis Street in De Pere, and I'm speaking tonight in support of the resolution expressing full confidence in the Green Bay's fall elections. Um, so I vote in De Pere, but I accompanied my family to early vote at um, Green Bay City Hall. And I also was an observer at Atonement Lutheran Church polling location as a de-escalation specialist. I was there to make sure no one was intimidated at the polls that would prevent them from voting. Um, and my experience is at both the early vote location and at the polls, what I observed was democracy at its best. Poll workers suited up to do their patriotic duty to make sure people could vote. Voters risked their lives to participate in our democracy. Um, and at both the early vote location and at the I polls, I, I saw oh, a yeah, few lines. A I saw a few lines. People were in and out of the polls in typically 15 minutes. Facilities were clean. People were working hard to get voters processed safely and efficiently. And after the polls closed, I watched the central count live stream online, which I thought was a brilliant way to ensure election transparency for everyone during the pandemic. Um, elections are a nonpartisan issue and expanding voting rights should be a bipartisan issue. So in December, I was elected chair of the Democratic Party of Brown County, and I'm proud that my party is working to expand access to voting so that all people can exercise their basic democratic rights, no matter where they live, the color of their skin, if they have a disability or even what party they vote for. So the unfounded accusations that Democrats infiltrated the Green Bay's elections are based on right-wing conspiracy theories that have already been thrown out of court. And I would urge the council to stand with your fellow residents, voters, and poll workers in defense of our local elections um, for the well-being of our community and for our democracy. So thank you very much. Thank you. And next in the queue, we have Tina M. I will lower your hand and your my name. name. My name is Christina Mercier. My address is 845 Bader Street. And I am attending this because I think it's my duty as a good citizen to do so. Um, I was very confused by the media presentation of this issue. I didn't understand what was going on. So I did some research and it started to become more clear to me when I connected it with some articles in Time Magazine and The Atlantic that I've been hearing about. I believe the author of those articles was Molly Ball and 
it was titled The Secret Shadow Campaign of 2020, at least in, in one of them. I'm not sure if it was the same title in both of them, but I believe it was the same article. And um, it talks about how I, what I think is this group behind the funding and the grant, um, how they were working around the whole country. This is larger than Green Bay. They were working around the whole country. They had an agenda. Um, and I think it's important that we educate ourselves about these things going on because it could be changing our government system of elections. And we aren't really having much say in it, as far as I can tell, because there's so little known about this, but they have a lot of money and they have an agenda. And um, I don't know that all of it is constitutionally based, what they're doing. I don't know if it's legal or not. Um, I guess those things are to be determined, but I think we need to be willing to start getting involved and to learn more about these processes so that our elections aren't changed to the point where we don't feel in control anymore or we don't feel like we, you know, have much say. So um, I think, oh, and I, I want to say that the article in the Atlantic was in there either right before or right after their name was changed. And I don't remember exactly what the change was. It still has Atlantic in it. But I'm hoping that people that are listening will look into this situation and at least give it a chance. Because I've been trying to learn all sides of issues as much as possible. I think it's important for unity and it's giving me a much broader perspective. And it's still all very confusing. Um, I don't really see any black and white truth by any means, but I'm working on learning as much as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, with their hand raised is Karen. If you could state your name and address for the record and your time will start after you state your name and address. Can you hear me, Karen? Okay, um, I will go on to the next one. That would be Kim Diaz. If you could just state your name and address for the record. Is there anyone else here to speak on this item? All right. Um, oh, excuse me. This is Kim Diaz. Oh, hi. Sorry, I did not mute. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, if you want to <sighs> go ahead and state your name and address for the record, and we will give you three minutes to speak. Uh, my name is Kim Diaz, and my address is 416 13th Avenue. And I wanted to say that um, April was the first time that I voted absentee. I was so grateful to be able to do because I was um, a high risk for COVID and I was afraid to be in a big crowd of people voting. And I was so grateful that I had signed up for absentee ballot because, you know, the lines were so long. And um, so then, you know, when it came to the November election, I also voted absentee. And I felt very safe being able to to do that. You know, I went to the box and dropped off my ballot and it was really safe and easy and I was grateful to be able to do that. And I wanted to say thank you to all of the, I wanted to say thank you to all of the um, poll workers and the staff force too. Um, count the ballots and you know I'm just grateful that you're all 
um, took the chance to do that, the, the risk of doing that, and for all the voters that voted. Um, I wanted to say when I heard this come up, I, I was very angry that someone is accusing our city of you know, not having a free and fair election and some kind of fraud. And especially um, the mayor, I was upset that they were accusing him of not doing a, a good job when we're in the middle of a pandemic, which is the first time that any of us had experienced this. And so I would think that they would understand that this was an exception. And I felt that, um, you know, we did it very safely. And I trust that, you know, all of the people that were doing this good work were doing it with good intentions and that everyone was working hard, long hours, and that I just really appreciate that. I was horrified when I saw what happened um, at the Capitol and the attack on our election there. And I see this as a extension of that to, um, you know, disqualify our election or somehow say that it wasn't um, accurate because somebody cheated or there was fraud. And that really makes me angry because they're endangering our democracy. And I hope that you all will, you know, stick up for our democracy and for our city because I believe we're doing a great job. So thank you, everyone. I'm done. Thank you. And if MS Taku Music would like to speak, I'm going to unmute you. And if you could just state your name and address for the record. Taku. Unmute. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. My name is, um, it actually is Ms. Taku. Because uh, if I don't have the Ms. in front of it, sometimes people think I'm a man. So my name. <laughs> so anyway, um, my name is Taku Ronsman, and I live at 1688 Beaver Dam Drive. And I've... Um, been thinking about uh, ever since the uh, victory tour uh, and Stop the Steal uh, rallies started, I've been feeling really ang having a lot of anxiety because our, our country's so polarized and it's like we're living in two different worlds. Schools to high student achievement have expanded preschool and have balanced budgets. Wait, I'm hearing somebody else's computer. Sorry, let me mute, and I have stopped the time for just a moment. Oh, are you stopping my time while that's going on? Correct. Your time has been stopped, and it has now been muted. Okay. See, this is this is that what just happened is like two different worlds. My world, and then that world that was coming at me. And so I've been, I've actually been seeing a counselor for the past few months to deal with the anxiety of what's going on in, in the nation and in our community. I'm a person, I've, I've lived a, a kind of a rough life and I'm proud of myself that I made it through college and, and graduate school and, um, and I got to get to work as an educator and do and created my own music program. I'm, I'm proud of myself, but there's a part of me that still gets filled with anxiety when there's fighting and, and um, like that insurrection as a victim of violence, watching what happened was a very scary thing. And I'm, and I'm seeing, I think it's like an atom bomb went off and now there's all this fallout all over the United States, excuse me. And I've been really thinking, how can we come together? And I've been thinking about um, something that happened recently between me and Alderman Chris Weary. And I'm feeling real bad because in my anger, 
you know, I, I've been wanting to blame Donald Trump for everything, but it's life is more complicated than that. We're, you know, we're like an ecosystem. Society is like an ecosystem and, and we um, affect each other. And so uh, right now I want to apologize to Chris Weary. And I actually was going like this, 5-5 five, five tonight. And, and, and I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm looking at Alder Johnson and thinking about all the cool stuff I've gotten to do with um, on Broadway with, with the multicultural music and stuff. And I got to um, sing with Chris Weary at an event. And it's like sometimes people can really get along but then somehow politics makes everybody crazy and and primal and it's like we're at war like literally it feels like we're at war and um and so i want to apologize to chris for um things that i said on facebook about um someone that's his hero just because i have a different viewpoint i you know i took my anger how i feel towards someone that he admires but I know he feels the same anger towards some people I admire. And somehow we got to come together. So I'm hoping that you will support um, okay. this resolution and start working towards finding ways to build bridges. And, and, it's, and, and that's something that I think On Broadway has been real uh, good at with their um, programs that they do, you know, all the different... Yep. And you Programs, were at three minutes. Uh, you know, now. The, art, the arts community so, has been doing a lot of cool you. stuff to bring people together, diverse people together. So, so um, that's how I want to close. And thank Let's you for start your time. working together you, more and building bridges and um, stop hating each other just because you have of spoken for three minutes. I believe you are able to raise your thank hand you. again. Thank you. I don't need to talk again. I talk too much. So, uh, so I'm done. I'll mute myself. All right, thank you. Next we have Heidi Sherman. If you could state your name and address for the record and your time will start once once you state your name and address, please. Yeah, can you hear me all right? I can, yes. Okay, my name is Heidi Sherman and I live at 612 South Bear Street, Green Bay. And I, yeah, I agree with the speaker, a couple of speakers back, well, I mean, and also the previous one, I was I I could not physically go to the poll because um, my my husband had cancer and was very immune compromised, and but it was really important for um, us to vote, and I was so happy that we could absentee vote. Um, and I thought it was handled beautifully. And I'm, I'm just really, really upset that the divisiveness that um, has been happening around the country has made it to Green Bay. Um, it's, I mean, impugning our, uh, the election process in Green Bay is just, I mean, it is wrong. I also see the protests against the uh, um, election process and against um, the mayor as an extension of what, what's been happening in other parts of the country. And it's just really sad. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm very the mayor and um, how things have been going in the city. And I think the election process here has been very fair. So thank you very much. Thank you. And let's see, it looks like we have Tina M for a second time. Excuse me, this is Alder Gerlach. Bill Loving has had his hand up for a long time and he has not spoken. Okay, he will be next and thank you. And if you could unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record, please. Bill Loving, three. watching the proceedings and uh, enjoying them. This is democracy. This is local government. Uh, and I've been sympathizing with the alders and staff and the mayor uh, who have been dealing with these accusations 
I voted in the November election fraud of faith that was. But I understand that many people choosing their own information that the election was done because it didn't win. And that's too bad because you can't change. Now, there are attempts now based upon claims that the election was improperly run for to vote. City Council, the Common Council, support the election process and guard against attempts to, to be allowed to vote. As Alder Scannell said uh, in talking about evidence, um, six city lawsuits filed by the Republic's chief course here in Green Bay, where intimately familiar. Uh, in the lawsuits, the plaintiffs had to present, present evidence in support of their not. Night, uh, people who claim or question, or Scannell points out, it's uh, just a lot of anger. I believe in what the city has done. I believe in the process of this election and common council to support the city, the staff, the election workers, because they want to have people question them. And the legislature um, is a slap in the face. I suggest that you keep in mind that members of the legislature, both at the state and federal level, know the truth. They're not under oath when they stand up and make their speech. Please uh, support the election process. Don't subvert it because do. Um, if you just to help repudiate the election process and that would be a terrible disaster for the country. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we have Andrea Johnson in the queue. If you could unmute yourself and state your name and address for your record, for the record, please. My name is Andrea Johnson. I live at 387 Windward Road and I spoke, um, maybe I was first. Um, so just coming back around again, I wanna thank you all for listening. I don't think, I think we have to be careful as city council, as mayor, as citizens to assume that this is about trying to overturn an election. Um, in in the way that I feel about it, it is, it is not going to overturn any election. The goal is not to do that. The goal is, however, to ask questions in a democratic way and to have those questions answered in a democratic way um, when we see things um, like third party money coming in, like understanding um, Michael Spitzer Rubenstein's background with the Democratic Party and helping win campaigns, we have to ask those questions. When things don't line up, I'm sorry, but that's, we have to ask them. And um, we, we do want answers to those questions because that is how a democracy gets to stay a democracy. If we don't get answers, then it's not a democracy anymore. And although we all have feelings one way or the other, I can assure you that we're not looking to overturn an election. We're just looking to make sure that the election integrity um, next election and that April election never, never happens again. I, I don't believe that I have seen anything from Mayor Genrick that actually apologizes for the way that was handled. Um, 
and I I would like to see it in pub in 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 print. Um, I don't aspire to Facebook, so if that's the only way that the mayor communicates um, printed form, then I'm hoping that he will do so in in other venues. Um, but I do. Uh, appreciate your listening to people today and um, I just have one other question that I would like to pose and hope that someday someone would answer it is that with all the money that was given to other municipalities besides the Wisconsin five were their advisors equal to Mr. Spitzer Rubenstein, Rubenstein um, appointed to those municipalities, no matter their dollar amount donated. That's my question. And I thank you so much for all your time and have a great uh, rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Jennifer Grant to speak. Hi, my name is Jennifer Grant, and I live at 3425 Yorkshire Road. Um, you know, I have to say, I'm a little bothered by all of the name calling of conspiracy theorists, white supremacy, poor losers. Um, you know, you, we talk about bringing people together, and this is this isn't about right or left. If we don't have voter integrity, it has nothing to do with right or left. Um, I think people need to stop categorizing everyone. And Andrew, you nailed it. Um, we're not asking for this to be overturned. We're asking for better training. Again, why was an outsider brought in? There was no one local, and why did someone step down that felt uncomfortable? There is nothing wrong with asking questions. And why aren't we getting answers? Why was the National Guard was offered in April? What was the reasoning to not take that? And because of that, there was three hour lines. If you want voter integrity, the voters need to be confident in what they're showing up to. And that is not giving us confidence. And I am not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not a white supremacist. I'm not a poor loser. But when I show up to vote, I want to know that my vote is counting and I'm not going to stand in line for three hours. I want to know that ballots aren't being corrected that shouldn't be corrected. I want to have confidence in the new way that we're doing things. And I understand making flexibility for people who aren't comfortable coming to the polls and making it safe for everyone. But gosh, when I even showed up to my polling place, I wasn't even asked for a voter or for my ID. That's a law. Um, there needs to be better training. And because of what I saw this year, and because I apparently I have a conspiracy theory thing to you guys, I am vowing to show up now on election day and to learn more and be a volunteer worker because I just, I don't have confidence. I'll be completely honest with you. And I am a young voter. So this does need to get better for the future or I'm losing faith. That's all. Thank you. Next we have Elliot Christensen. If you could unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Elliot Christensen, uh, 1988 Mulberry Lane, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but uh, I noticed that I had to counteract some of the people that actually don't live in Green Bay that were coming in to speak. So I figured that I had to balance that out a little bit. So... Um, I'm not going to say anything that hasn't been said already by me and by uh, a million other people. So, um, and I'm very disappointed in the three minute thing, as I've said before. Uh, uh, and why you would squelch taxpayers and voters with their questions and comments. That's an affront to democracy. I'd love to have Ned Dorf on here to debate him on that because I think that's uh, completely an affront to democracy. And uh, and the other gentleman was talking about uh, white supremacy or something like uh, you know, um, yeah, being limited to three minutes. I must be a white supremacist. Um, that must be what's going on here. Um, oh, um, we have. Uh, a, a historically bad election that the mayor has not apologized for that happened in April. 
we had a bunch of things happen that are questionable including the resignation or firing or I don't know what happened and I, I think that this is why it deserves some investigation and some uh, reporting of our city clerk I think that this deserves to be brought to light and uh, uh, the insults that are being hurled by uh, the members of city council and by the people that are speaking on their behalf uh, in support I think of this resolution it's very confusing why we're having a resolution to express full confidence that seems sort of weird um, but apparently that's what we're doing um, I don't understand calling people out for just asking for clarity and accountability and I I, I think if you if you check most of the people that are asking for clarity and accountability I bet most of them went to public school and uh, that's our fault that's our fault if if they don't understand if they don't understand how our elections work that's our fault tell them teach them show them again let's show them some clarity let's give them a report let's do it again if they're still unsure let's do it again let's keep doing it i don't i don't understand what the problem is with that i i do not understand why we would ever stop researching questionable activity and clarifying for people that don't understand our election process why would we not want everyone to understand how our elections work nobody's clarified that for me yet i don't know why we limit people to three minutes and we don't want people to understand our elections we want to keep this a uh, black box and lock it away and keep it a secret and that's offensive to me i'd like to spend my last five seconds talking about fluoride thank you okay thank you And next we have, for the first time, it would be Dan T. If you could see. Uh, Hi. Uh, sorry, uh, Dan Terrio, 1170 Minahan Street, Green Bay. Uh, I'm gonna cut to the chase. This whole election theory that there was some sort of fraud, this is an effort to discredit the processes in which we have that are secure, which has been set it secure across the country, but it's mostly to disenfranchise voters. We had a record number of individuals vote absentee or vote for the first time. It just so happens that those individuals are persons of color. What this is an effort is to disenfranchise them further by saying that this, the vote in Wisconsin was not secure and let's enact more voter regulations, um, and which is a lot of the reason why you see members of the Republican Party actively involved in this process. Um, I voted absentee both times. I think that what happened in April was horrible. Um, but what you saw in the in the November, from what I heard from people who showed up to vote, it was safe, it was secure, and people were able to fully exercise their right to vote, their right to vote. And what we are doing right now by perpetuating these myths that there is some sort of fraud is furthermore doing exactly what it's intended to do is to get people worried that there's some sort of big steal here when there's been proof, there's no proof that there is any type of fraud. So I'm encouraging you all to take a stand, stand with your poll workers who risked their lives and gave their time to this city to ensure that the vote was secure and that every person that was able to vote was able to vote. To stand with those poll workers, to stand with those employees that, that stepped up to assist to make sure this election went smooth, stand with them and support this resolution tonight. That's all I gotta say, thank you. Thank you. And next we have Tina M for the second time. Yes, um, my address is 845 Bader Street, Green Bay. And um, I wanted to reiterate about the articles that I had mentioned in Time Magazine by Molly Ball, as well as The Atlantic, and that um, at least one from Time Magazine is also online. And again, it's called The Secret Shadow Campaign of 2020. And as I was listening to other people talk, I remembered something else I learned um, about that article, which I had forgotten to say, 
is um, although they had an agenda and a lot of money, it was not democratically based. It was not Republican based. It wasn't, you know, by either of those two parties. Um, the parties maybe didn't even know about them. I'm not really sure. But I think this is a very complicated issue and I did not join in to support or not support the resolution. I'm interested in understanding what's behind all of this. Thank you. Thank you. And if there's anyone else to speak on this item, if they would please raise their hand. And it well, looks- I don't know how, how to raise my hand on this. That's okay, you can be the next one to speak. If you could just state your name and address for the record and your time will start after you state that. Sure. My name is Edward Jensen. I live at 541 on Alpine Bay. So I've listened to a lot of these comments and the thing that bothers me is it's not what happened in Washington, D.C. on January 6th that we're even looking into. I drove with 49 people on my bus from all over the state of Wisconsin, true patriots. They paid a lot of money to ride the bus to go to Washington, D.C. to participate in a rally and to offer their support for this country. And yes, they were very sad on the way home. I also worked the polls, and we're not talking about how the election process went that day. I worked there. I didn't see any irregularities. But it's about what happened at Central Count that I don't know exactly what went on. And that's what I want investigated. It's the outside influence and the money. That's the problem. It's not the people of Green Bay that decided this election. It was decided from people from outside the state by putting in all this extra money and sending people to work here and to work to get out the vote. Now, if we can't do that ourselves in the city of Green Bay, then we have no business running an election, I guess. And it's about what happened at the city clerk's office. Why did we have a change? What went on there? I don't know, but I'd like to have those answers. Thank you very much. Thank you. And it looks like there's no hands raised in their queue. If anyone would like to speak, if they could unmute themselves at this time and state your name and address. Okay, Your Honor. Can I, can I say one more thing, please? Sure, if you could just state your name and address again and we will start the time. Yeah, my name is Taku Ransman still. 1688 Beaver Dam Drive. And I just want to say, um, as I was listening, you know, to what people were just saying now, and I still feel, you know, people still have, everybody has their own little story and view of, of what happened, you know, and what makes them happy or sad about what happened has happened. And I'm thinking, I'd really like to see, I don't know who would get this started, but I remember when the, um, oh, it, the, what's that big council that gets together of the citizens? Um, do you know what I'm, the, they used to call it the mayor's um, council with, with all the neighborhood associations, that group. They, they would send people, um, to get community training on how to be good community leaders. And, and I, I, I went to one of those and it was really valuable. And I think it'd be nice if we had things locally where people could get together and learn how to dialogue with one another and hear each other without telling people always, you shouldn't have said that and you shouldn't be thinking that and you shouldn't be because 
it seems like it's really hard for people to just hear what people are saying and then try to problem solve. So that's my two cents I'd like to throw in that, because I'd like to see our community move forward instead of staying divided, because I, I, it feels like we're going to be divided for quite a while. So um, that's all. Thank you. I'm going to mute myself again. OK, thank you. Oh, anybody can see me? Okay, if there's anyone who else who would like to speak, if you could just unmute yourself at this time and state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, I'm Denise Gammer Hutchison, 3184 Hermans Road in New Franken. And I am calling because I was, I've, I've been a poll worker for a number of elections now. And I just, in this last election, and I sent all of you on the city of uh, the common council um, a letter to an email tonight um, stating mainly what I'm going to be saying. But what was important for me to share is it was a very well run election and people worked very hard to do things correctly. And a lot of people came through a lot of different areas. I had the opportunity to work. Um, early in-person voting at City Hall. I worked on Saturday for the drive-through election where Chris Weary and Celestine and the mayor joined us to kind of supervise and review what was happening. People were thrilled with the opportunities they had for the alternative voting methods that allowed them not to have to get Get out of there. It was ease of access to get into City Hall. Um, we registered a lot of people to vote. There were a number of first time voters. I then worked at the Sears building um, where we had a number of precincts and people were thrilled with how quickly they got through and how accurate and timely it was. We registered a large number of people to vote on site there. After we closed down that site, I had an opportunity to go at Central Count. And what I want to say about, and, and in every one of these places, and including Central Count, there were people monitoring and watching us from, you know, different and everything that way. And it was very precise and it was very careful how it was presented to us, how ballots were brought to us, how they were taken away from us, you know, after we were done reconciling them and all of the different actions. And it was very carefully administered. And not once did I see any inappropriate or incorrect behavior. And I just want to say that it's really a sad day in our democracy when people are doubted and questioned by this because we want it. And so I really hope that you put the word out to people across the state of Wisconsin and really across the United States that Green Bay won, run, ran a great election and it was accurate, it was timely, it was transparent, and it was well run. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If there's anyone else who wishes to speak on this item, if you could just unmute yourself at this time. Your Honor, it looks like there's no one else here to speak. Entertain a motion. Close the floor. Second. The motion has been made to close the floor by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Dorf. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. You guys have it. The floor is closed. Um, so I still have a bunch of people in the queue, looks like from last time we spoke. So if you just want to check your buttons and make sure you still want to speak. Alder Brunette. No, I, I I'll, I'll wait. I'll let someone who hasn't spoken. I, I had it. Alder, Alder Johnson. Alder Galvin. 
Uh, no, I, my button is green right now. But okay. Alder um, Weary. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could, we are still on number one, correct? We yes. Not, okay, That's we correct. didn't. Okay, I just want to make sure we didn't combine them. And no, I have, I have nothing else right now. Thank you. Okay. You bet. Uh, Alder Scannell. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to address two points. One that um, you know, this is this we're going to improve our next election with uh, this whole process. Uh, that's not what's going on here at all. Uh, what was going on in Madison and and by others is uh, accusations that this uh, election was inappropriate and illegal, and it's all accusation. It's not their intent isn't to improve our election; it's to discredit it. And if we want to improve our elections, there is a process for that. I believe. Our, our last city clerk, after every election, problem solved and, and went over it the following election better. And I believe our city clerk will do the same. That's the process. This ain't the process of making an election better. That's not what's going on here. And this is a, a, a terrible process for that. Uh, and lastly, um, I can appreciate there's a lot of um, questions out there by uh, uh, our constituents and uh, you know they don't know how things work. But this is not a schoolhouse. This is not the venue for that. Uh, if, if people need to learn how elections are run or, or anything is run with the city, we should work on how we can uh, inform, inform our public. But really, we're here for city business. We're not here to play school. So I'm going to spend the last two minutes talking about fluoride. Thank you. Thank you, Alder. Any other comments from council on this item? Alder Mr. Burnett. Mayor. Oops, uh, I'm Alder Lefebvre, if Mayor, you could go with Alder Lefebvre first. Okay. Alder Lefebvre and then Alder Burnett. I just want to say that um, I don't know if I might mention this before. I was an SRD, a special registered deputy, and I could register people. And I just want to mention something that people are very honest about voting. That's one thing that I really was blown away that they're honest about. They always told me right away if they could not vote, could not register to vote or vote. And, you know, reasons that they were uh, not through probation or that they were illegal. I never asked them, are you illegal? They just would um, just give it to me. So, and I also want to say that I know that the staff that worked on this and all the poll workers, everybody takes us seriously. They believe in our right to vote and our, our democracy. And I, I really, I'm upset that people are really questioning this with these, and a lot of these <laughs> accusations are bogus, they're not right. And I just wanna say that people take our democracy, the majority of people take it serious. And we did a very good job on this election. Thank you. Thanks Alder, Alder Burnett. Make a motion to suspend the rules to allow city council members to go over the five minute limit, please. Second. Do you have a limit in mind, Alder? I don't know how long it will take me. I mean, I'm not going to ramble, but I have a lot of points I just want to add, and I just don't want to feel like I'm up against a running clock. That's all. A motion has been made to suspend the rules. It's been seconded. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't know. It's all to be reasonable, and I believe that the discussions up until this point have been extremely reasonable. We don't always agree as a government. We don't always agree as a people. We're a very uh, diverse group of people in this community and in this country, and obviously two very partisan sides that have very specific ideas of how the country should be run. We don't have a, a Republican truth and there is no Democrat truth. There is only the truth. And it's up to elected people and people in government and all people to find that truth. And, and a lot of times the media you know, investigates the truth and they put something out and then it's in the public domain. And just because you know publications tend to be one way or the other, I really don't know if there's any non-biased, unbiased publications anymore. I mean, I, I really struggle finding one. And so we, we, we have to understand how we got here, okay? Um, for what it, what, 
whatever the reasons, uh, I was critical of the April election. We, as a city, made a lot of mistakes and hundreds, if not a few thousand people, perhaps did not get an opportunity to vote in the city. So then the city council agreed to start this ad hoc uh, elections committee, included Alder Dorf, Alder Weary, you really stepped up and you led on that and I'm grateful. So when we approved the first batch of the money from the uh, Center for Tech and Civic Life, that was in July, after what happened in the April election, and we have this you know, source of money where we were saying, well, we can pay for PPE and polling locations and we can pay poll workers. It would take a lot to vote against that at that time. You know? So it's true that the council unanimously supported that, that money and I did too. And then when I noticed it was a special meeting to approve a second batch of that funding, in this case, it was 500,000. Um, and then also to approve a $150,000 marketing contract or contract for a public promotions firm to promote our election. By this time, there was some suspicion in the community about the money and specifically the, the source. And although I supported the second batch of the money, the reason why I did that was we were told from our city staff that it would go for tablets and laptops and things that would help us not in just this election, but in future elections. What I really struggled with and what I voted about and what I was very vocal about was accepting the contract for the $150,000 for a public relations firm. The reason why I was really skeptical of that is the, the firm that we chose could not be very, did not give very good straight answers as to would we use analytics? Would they use analytics to target voters? And the reason I say that is not because I don't want people to vote. I want everyone to vote. I said that at the meeting. I say that now every single person should vote. The issue is when you use outside funding from a third party source, in this case, Mark Zuckerberg and his wife, how can you ensure that, that all voters will be targeted equally? And I felt like a proper way to do that would be send a postcard to every registered address throughout the entire city. And I believe we were told that there wasn't going to be enough time perhaps to have that happen. So then the city did look at, and by the way, the city council didn't necessarily make these decisions. The mayor said the city staff would make these decisions. And I kind of questioned that. How can we be completely unbiased in targeting or sending you know, voter navigators out to the community because you want to reach everyone. But when you only, you know, particularly voter navigators focus on English speakers or Hmong speakers or Spanish speakers, there are a lot of Somali residents of this city, there are a lot of Russian residents, a lot of, you know, uh, French speakers, German. You have to reach out to all people and, and it's hard to do that. So, so by, by, by extending ourselves to promote the election, which is not entirely a, a bad thing, but by using outside resources, it could appear to the public that that is electioneering. And I spoke about that. You can all have different opinions about it, but that's what made me very uncomfortable. And what I said was, what happens at the point where we take money from you know, Republican or conservative or wealthy business people the next go around, maybe they want to help the city of Green Bay. Are we going to have the fortitude to say, nope, because the way that that would look to the other political side would be very suspicious. And that's what we're at right now. I hate the partisanship in our country and I hate the partisanship that seeped into our local politics. What I find very concerning, and you see it here in, in the response to this situation, you see it with some of the speakers. And, you know, I'm not a perfect person. I know that. I, I know I have my own vulnerabilities and things that I don't necessarily see. I get that. Call me on it when I, when I act out in that manner. But highly partisan people tend not to see themselves as highly partisan. That's the problem. One side will blame the other, then the other will blame the other, and they don't understand the double standards in their own hypocrisy. And so you have this center for, t you have this, uh, these emails the reason why this is an issue right now is after the election, we had received uh, multiple open records requests. You know, I put a little pressure, I don't know if pressure is the word, but I brought public awareness to the number of open records requests. It's not like I was trying to intervene or try to get the city to get caught up in some wrongdoing, but if we're, we expected sign off on this election as being completely proper and perfect, 
the media investigates things private citizens investigate things so to our credit of though it took like three or four months to fulfill all those open record requests our city law office did just that because we were probably one of the first municipalities to do so especially in the quote unquote wisconsin five that has attracted a lot of attention it has a it has brought a lot of attention to green bay and although the publications so far have been partisan in nature, let's be real. There's a tradition in this country of muckraking journalism. As intelligent adults, we have to balance everything. We have to balance the right and we have to balance the left. Any person that only gets their news from one source is doing a tremendous disservice to themselves. And this builds this frustration and tension. We've created echo chambers, okay? So there is no Republican truth. There is no truth. There is only the truth. I'm very proud of this council tonight because we asked so many good questions. So many good questions that the city attorney did a wonderful job answering most of them, but there are some that she just wasn't able to answer in the entirety. And I don't blame her. I mean, we're, heck, we're, we're talking and some of us speak extemporaneously, questions come up. So we need to get some of those answers. When I sit in this seat, or when I sit at the seat at City Hall, when we are at City Hall, although I'm a single person, the way I envision my role is I always picture 8,500 people sitting behind me, okay? The 8,500 people are the people I serve. That's always a visualization that I make in my head about well, how I am representing people. So the 8,500 people behind me are made up of Democrats, Republicans, far left, far right, moderates, people who are quite frankly sick of politics and don't trust politicians. I would say quite a few people that just don't even follow this stuff, right? They don't even follow politics for a variety of reasons. So we have to ensure trust in our institutions. Um, so we do have the open records request. There are still some pending open records requests. I don't know what, 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 what is going to be reported or how it will be released. Uh, when we talk about this election, we have to not make false equivalencies or we can't put ad hominem attacks. By us asking these questions or for the public having suspicions about this election, they're not attacking the poll workers. They're not attacking the staff, many of whom work the election, but were not involved in the decisions of administering the election. I think that that's a lot of the questions that people have how were the decisions made in administering the election? This is not an attack on democracy. As far as I can see, no one's looking to overturn the actual vote of the election. I think, I mean, for heaven's sake, they put in all the other people were sworn into office. I don't hear from people in my district, in my community, that they're looking at this point to overturn the election. At some point, that was the conversation in some circles, of course. But this is not, by asking these questions, we're not saying that people that work the elections, our staff, poll workers, and community members were in wrong. We're not discrediting them. We need to understand that. That's a false equivalency. It's not the red herring. And it's this idea that we're undermining democracy by you know, taking a second look at, at things and, and improving the processes. Uh, there are so many things that still need to be answered. Um, Thousands of pages of emails were dropped, or thousands of pages of city records were dropped on the on the internet, on the website, three or four days ago. Okay, I've reviewed a lot of them. I'm on the city council. Public still has a right to look through, through those of purpose that the city dropped those uh, open records on the website. So, you know, before we rush into any, you know, I know we're talking about the resolution, but before we rush into any action, we have to understand that for many members of the public, this is not a, a closed issue right now, okay? 7,500, 225 people showed up at City Hall. Whether they were right or wrong in your opinion, they still showed up at City Hall, frustrated with the city of Green Bay and how, you know, the, the reports of the election, how we ran the election, the mayor perhaps, city council, I don't know, I wasn't there. But that's something. When you have that many people in the public show up to protest something, that is something. And we can't just ignore as if they never showed up. It is possible the city will be subpoenaed 
to testify before the Wisconsin Elections Committee. Okay? That was not a Stalinist show trial or a three ring circus. That was a branch of a government in the United States of America, in this state, the, the state of Wisconsin. Okay? Can't dismiss other levels of government as being a Stalinist show trial and still expect to, you know, pretend you're some level of nonpartisan person. That was a, a very, just wanted to say that. Um, so the 8,500 people left, right, everyone in between. I, I have a duty to, to represent them and not be swung to the extreme on either side. Continue to hear from people, continue to let this thing flesh out. There are other, there are other publications that are releasing articles. There were two that were dropped today um, we have to get back to what this core function of the city of Green Bay is for. Elections is a core function of this of this uh, government. Um, real quick, I think uh, I think that's it. So uh, thank you for hearing me out on this. I was a little ra more rambly than I thought, but this is a big issue. You know, we have to represent all people, and I'm not going to be driven to the extreme on any side on this issue. I'm not going to let uh, people with false arguments try to you know, sway me one way or the other. I have to listen to all people because that's my duty as an elected official. The city council should be independent, okay? We are not involved in the day-to-day -day functions, planning, operation of the city. Some of us have a little more inside pull in the city hall, maybe, I don't know. But, you know, because we are not involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the election, we have to ask these questions because it keeps people accountable. And I want people to keep me accountable by asking me tough questions. Why did you vote for this? Why did you say that? Why did you do that? That's government. That's why we do this. We represent the people for good government. So goodness gracious, there's so much more I could say, but I'll allow other people to speak. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder. Thank you. Alder Gerlach. I just, I, I actually turned off my light because I have such a tiny little thing to say. It, it's not at all philosophical or political or anything, but it's just a, I'll just share this with you folks because sometimes it's nice to have um, some concrete uh, proof that the money we spent worked. And so, you know, that $150,000 $150, we spent for public relations, and I've heard several people mention that, and what was that for? Um, we had some wonderful brochures, print order brochures in English and Spanish and Hmong, and I heard what Alder Burnett said about there are people who speak other languages, including Somali, and um, I have Spanish-speaking people who are very near me in my neighborhood, and I have Hmong speaking people very near me in my neighborhood, but no Somalis. And uh, someone who works at City Hall was kind enough to drop off for me during the pandemic, a collection of these brochures in English, Spanish, and Hmong. And I was able to take the Spanish ones out to my Spanish speaking neighbors and say, here, if you vote, I don't know, I can't speak Spanish, but this will help you. And I was able to take some to some Hmong neighbors. And one young Hmong gentleman said to me, this is wonderful. I'm going to take it to the Hmong community center and share it. And then um, one of my former Somali students from the Somali center where I taught um, citizenship classes came to my home to visit me. He had voted for the first time in his life in the United States. And his wife had a question about voting. And I didn't have anything in Somali, but he knew English well enough and we could communicate well enough that I could take the English version of the brochure and explain it to him and hand it to him and say, here, this is the instructions for your wife. So I just wanted to, to point out that there was some uh, tangible result in some of this that maybe nobody knows about, but th those little bitty things really made a difference to some people. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. Um, we have a number of people in the queue, but I think all, all have twice, with the exception of Alder Weary. Is your button still pressed, Alder? No. Uh, so we have Alder Scannell and Alder Galvin. That would be for a third time, however. You have any further comments? 
I do. Uh, if Alder Galvin can go first, though, because I'd like to go into closed session when I'm done. Um, I just, after listening to Alder Burnett um, talk about representing those 8,500 people, and I guess we all do. We all have 8,500 people standing behind us. Uh, when I heard the accusations being made about the election um, by a, a governmental body of the state of Wisconsin, I was disappointed, though. I mean, government, good government, um, just like you argued today, uh, several of the alders argued for even more time for people to talk. Good government listens to everybody. And yet here we have a government body that didn't even have the courtesy to invite members from our city government um, or uh, made it very difficult for members from the opposing party to be present at this meeting. Uh, very one-sided, very skewed. Uh, there's been several state legislators that get up on their soapbox and have made pronouncements, uh, demanded arrests, demanded people to resign. Uh, they've given no evidence. And I'm, I'm reminded of uh, Joe McCarthy. I have here the names of 30 people that altered the Green Bay city election. I'm not going to tell you the names. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, I got out there, see what sticks, get everybody all fired up, and, and create a, a, a an uproar over what turned out in the end with Mr. McCarthy, nothing. Um, I, I don't read a lot of different periodicals that are out there. Um, like Alder Burnett said, many of them are skewed one way or the other. What I, like, what I rely on, and, and maybe this is from being a cop, is I go to the source. Where did it happen? And we've had some very good conversations tonight with City Attorney Chavez. Um, some very good information is put out, but also because of the responsibility we have to those 8,500 people standing behind us. We have participated in how many meetings over the last year as council members, as committee members, listening to ad hoc committee members talk about the election process and how it was progressing and what was happening. Alder Lefebvre asked for an accounting of the money that was spent. You see a very detailed uh, list. And as, as we break this thing down, you know, now suddenly we're not upset about a million plus dollars. Now we're upset about 150,000 used for an advertising campaign. And then we're, and we're, we're waiting to hear what the answer is, exactly how was it used. But so from all this upset over a million dollars, now it's down to 150,000. From all this upset about this Mr. Rubenstein, three people that I trust and I trust a lot have, have told us that he had nothing to do with the election. And, and quite frankly, that's what I want to hear. That's the information I want to hear. Either he did or he didn't. And that's what I'm going to put my weight on, is what these city employees that we've hired, that we've vetted, that we trust, that we've worked with for years, that's where I'm going to put my trust. I'm not going to put my trust with a bunch of politicians in the state that donate us to come and give our fair side, our fair version of what happened on the election day. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell. Wow. I, I just knew he said it all. <laughs> Thank you, Alder Galvin. Uh, he said exactly McCarthy, and I'll just hammer again. Evidence. Show me the evidence. This is all based on blather. It's all smoke. And it's if, it, and if you follow, they say there's where there's smoke, there's fire. You follow the trail of smoke, and where does it lead? Not to evidence. At least the people lying, their pants are on fire. So uh, I think Elder Galvin put it very well. Thank you, sir. And I'd like to go into closed session. Alder Scannell makes a motion to go into closed session. Second. Seconded by Alder Gerlach on the I'd motion. like to make one comment, Mayor. Uh, yes, Alder Vanderlees, go ahead. Uh, you know, the, the money that we received from the Zuckenbergs, uh, I think the city should be reluctant in, in accepting money that's, uh, you know, he didn't, he didn't offer us the money to fix our sewer problems, but, but he wanted to get in on our elections. In other words, he wanted to have influence on the elections. And, and you have to see that for, for its merit as well, that, you know, he didn't, he didn't say, well, I want to help Green Bay or I want to help Milwaukee or I want to help these other cities, but he did offer the money for the elections. And, and that's something that we have to look at as well in 
that's a problem. I, I think that, you know, we accepting the money, uh, they, in other words, people that accept money, they, they expect things. You know, they expect influence. And uh, I'm not saying that, you know, that's the case, but I'm, I'm just saying that it, it was a targeted venue as far as, you know, they wanted to give the money for the election. They didn't want to help us in other areas where we have needs, but they wanted to jump in on the election part of it. So I want the, the city council to keep that in mind when you accept money from, from outsiders. Uh, we probably know better locally than if we have outside input from people from other, in other words, people from New York or wherever they might've been from, you know, coming in and trying to help us with our election. And, and I, I, I think they, they've, they've handled these elections for years. We probably didn't need their help at all, to be honest with you, that's my thought. And, uh, you know, they offered the money and, and we took it. And, and, and the money's caused some of the problems. And, and it, that, that's, might as well say that's just what it, what it amounted to. In other words, the influence, the money is an influence. And sure, you know, we accepted it, but was it, it the bit wasn't. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Weir, your point of order. Uh, Alder Johnson, go ahead, say your point of order. Uh, it, just on the motion itself, uh, obviously there's a motion to go into closed session. Um, and, and if I'm not mistaken, the purposes of going into closed session have to align with why we've posted. Uh, is the alder able to share, uh, I guess, just enough information for me to make an informed decision about this vote to determine if this warrants going into closed session? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, stated, it's stated in the language. Right, that, that, that's why I want to go into closed session. I want to see what we can do, uh, a response to this. Can we hear from the gentleman who still has his hand raised, um, Jim Ritterbush, before that? Oh, uh, well, the, the floor is closed currently. Do we need to make a motion to open the floor for three minutes? Uh, looks motion like on the floor. Motion to open the floor. It, it looks like, um, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. It looks like he lowered, it looks like he lowered his hand. Mayor. Oh. We do have a motion to go into closed session just to remind you. Yes. Yeah, so we should Do we have a, a motion and a second to go into closed session on that motion, Alder Weary? Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I was also uh, Alder Johnson, the, the esteemed member of <laughs> District 7 representative. Could you explain more why we're going into closed session? Yeah, I know there's some nebulous terminology, but is there something specific? Are we suing somebody that I don't know about? Or I think I would like to uh, speak uh, uh, freely and openly about our options to res in response to uh, the accusations made, which I don't know what, what all that include. So we need to go into closed session because I'm afraid some of that might be uh, a strategy that uh, uh, staff might take up that uh, should be in closed session. Okay, I so know, yeah. I don't know if it will, you know, I just like to look at the options. I don't know what options we have. So I want to be able to freely look at all of them. I, I appreciate that. Are there options? I, Does staff feel we should go into closed session? They put the language there, so I, I, I thought. Attorney Chavez, any comments yeah. for counsel? The reason the uh, public, uh, I'm sorry, the closed session was added to the agenda was so that the council could discuss what options they wanted to take moving forward, whether that be um, actions against anybody or actions that we want to take with respect to, um, like further investigations. So the sole purpose is to confer with legal counsel um, with respect to litigation that we could potentially be involved in. Attorney, are you aware, is there, are we looking to sue somebody? The state if, of Wisconsin? If, if, we, uh, if we were, that is something we would discuss in closed session exclusively. But can we even sue a, a legislative body? Is that, you know, like the assembly? You'd be looking more at a person, correct? Not a body? Isn't that why we need it, to no, this is an open this, this is an open question uh, you know and we as a city 
sue a legislative branch of the state of Wisconsin? Or are we looking at individuals? And this, that's a, just a, an open question. That's nothing secret about that. Attorney? Are you asking me to provide a legal opinion? Yeah. I would recommend we go into closed session to discuss it. Could the floor be open, please? This is Attorney Janet Angus. The floor is closed currently. Alder Burnett? Open the floor. Second. All in favor of opening the floor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Point of order. We, did we ever finish the motion on the floor? Or does this one take precedence? We're discussing it, I guess, right? We're under discussion, so. Uh, could we board that vote, please? Yeah. Forgive me, I would like a, um, Mayor, we do have a motion to go into closed session, and the, for, from Attorney Chavez, does a motion to open the floor then supersede that? This is Attorney Janet Angus. I would like to ask Attorney oh, Chavez. The, the floor is closed. We don't Those are two separate motions. They're both main motions. I think someone would like to discuss going into closed session. So it is, it's pertinent. So with two main motions on the floor, Attorney Chavez, which one has precedent? The first one. The okay. second Do one. Okay. Thank you. So we need to dispense with the motion to go into closed session first on, on, that, mo on that motion. Don't we always make a, a, a point to open the floor on a main motion? <laughs> Normally. No. A lot of times we do. No, not, not on a motion. You can. Alder Brunette, on the motion to go into closed session. I'm against it. Uh, you know, friends here, we have a lot of people in the public that don't trust the city of Green Bay right now. You can ignore it if you want, but that's the reality. And for us to go into closed session with some vague language about possible action the city's business right now, the people's business. And if there's a question of intent, it stinks that the state talked about this. It stinks that the articles have been written. I get all of it, but that's part of this process, all right? We have to admit how we got here, and that is a good number of the people in this city, due to the publicity that this issue has received, have a lot of questions and will put a lot of scrutiny on what we do and what our decision is. So it's for us as a body to um, go into closed session with no real specific options that we will be discussing that's relatable to the public, I think it's a travesty and I would be very careful. That's not, a, that, I'm gonna retract that. That sounds like a threat yeah. that I didn't make. I, I just, I don't think it's appropriate. So I guess uh, what I will ask attorney Chavez the, the, the questions that we, the, the issues that we will be going into closed session about, is this a strategy that is being provided by the city attorney's office or the mayor's office? I wanna find out. I, I wanna propose some things. Answer, uh, Attorney Chavez, the uh, Alder scandal obviously can, can offer some things, but the, the options that we have, will that be an option presented by the attorney's office or the mayor's office, or did you coordinate with Alder Scannell to provide oh, some uh, Alder, options? Alder, Alder, Alder Brunette, I don't know what rabbit hole you're going down here, but it's not appropriate. <laughs> the truth is always appropriate, Mayor. There's no truth. Right. Alder Brunette. Wow. Um, thank Dwarf. you. Thank you. Silence. I'm, Silence. I'm very Burnett. interested in going in, into closed session. Um, I have uh, actually called and asked what what can we do? I actually talked to Attorney Chavez and said, what can we do? There are some blatant lies, false accusations being um, laid against the city of Green Bay. And I wanna know what recourse we have. And perhaps it's because I asked that question um, that we uh, will be going into closed session because we can talk about recourse in closed session. That's the appropriate place. And that's the appropriate place to identify what exactly do we want to deal with? Which of these accusations, which of these people? So I want us to go into closed session for that reason. 
So there's been a motion and a second to move into closed session. Point of order, Mayor. Uh, I, I don't believe I received a ruling from the chair on, on my last point of order, which was um, the motion to open the floor. We always make that motion on a main motion. So I'm looking for a ruling on whether or not that is an appropriate motion to make. Yeah, Attorney Chavez said uh, that the motion to go into closed session uh, takes precedence. That's not what she said. She said they were the same. And she said it was offered first, so it takes precedence. <laughs> so we will vote on the motion. Um, but first, uh, Alder Scan, I'll read the language, if you would. Certainly. Common Council may convene a closed session pursuant to Section 19.85, Subsection 1, Subsection G, Wisconsin Statutes, for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel with a governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. The Common Council will thereafter reconvene an open session pursuant to Section 19.85, Subsection 2, Wisconsin Statutes, to take action on items discussed in closed session, if appropriate, and to consider the remainder of the agenda. Thanks, Alder. We will use the board. And that is seven to five to move into closed session. So hold huh. your, hold a travesty. Your, just hold your comments until uh, folks have been moved out of the room. Mayor, if you would just give us a moment to do that, um, I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. How do I get out and then come back? Uh, Ms. Ronsman, we will admit you back into the um, main room when we are finishing closed session. So, so right now, in the waiting room. So not right now, I press leave. No, if, if you press oh. leave, then you'll stay out. So we'll put you in the waiting room and we'll let you back in when we're finished. Oh, Thank okay. You. I know. <laughs> okay, we are back in open session, Mayor. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to return to open session. Motion to return to open session. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those nay, the ayes Let's have it, open session. I'd like to make a motion to hold this item till our next meeting. Second. second. Motion has been made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Lefebvre to hold item one until the next uh, regularly scheduled council meeting. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The item has been held until the next meeting. On to item two, consideration with possible action on a resolution expressing full confidence in the administration of Green Bay's August and November 2020 election. 
Can I speak Alder, on that? Alder Dorf, go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Council. Last week, I will tell you the inception of this resolution and, and talk about a bit about the two other alders, but I'm going to let them speak for themselves. That helped. Um, after I watched the hearing, I was pretty upset about the allegations, certain ones that I absolutely knew to be false. I spent a great deal of time working with elections. I proposed the ad hoc election committee. Um, I was involved on week, with weekly hours and hours long meetings. And in addition, did things outside to try to support the clerk and the clerk's office, um, along with other, other alders and other people. So it was pretty appalling for me to sit and listen to just one side of what was going on. But I really didn't know what to do. That was Wednesday, I, I, I thought about it and I thought about it. And then Friday night, I got a call from another alder. And this alder spoke with me, felt much the same I did. We talked a bit about what the possibilities would be and the idea of a resolution was born. The next day, I got, contacted another alder told this alder about the idea, and we set to work to come up with a resolution that was contained basically in about five hours of writing the resolution. And that didn't include the additional four hours of re-watching the hearing for which I paid $10 for that privilege because you have to pay if you want to watch the recordings on Wisconsin Eye. So during the five hours of working on this resolution and, and looking up, I, I looked at, or we looked at different meetings that were held. We looked at motions that were passed. We looked at Alder's lips as they moved to see, did they really vote on the motion when things weren't um, displayed on the board? And so that we were quite confident that everything that we put into this motion, all the whereases were facts. These were things that actually can be proved. Since that time, all of us have received, I believe, all of us got these emails, probably a hundred emails begging us as city council members to defend our city, to speak up, to tell the people of this city that we held a fair election and saying, Alders, you, you must do this for us. You, you must not let our city be torn down by people who don't know the truth and who are just listening to allegations. You must clarify this for the public. And that's where I think this resolution helps. What we do at our next meeting will also help. But I am asking, I'm going to ask the who was at the kitchen table with me to please read this resolution out loud. I'll read this resolution. Can, uh, Your Honor, do you want this to be shown on the screen by someone or do you want people to just listen? Uh, I think it would be fine if, if you were to just read the resolution, Alder. Okay. Resolution expressing full confidence in the administration of Green Bay's August and November 2020 elections, March 16th, 2021, the Common Council of the City of Green Bay, whereas in 2020, Green Bay faced pandemic conditions for the first time in 100 years, forcing city staff and the Common Council to reconsider all election processes and procedures and, for the health and safety of our citizens, adapt to federal and state health guidelines, and whereas all of Green Bay's 2020 elections were administered by the city clerk's office according to Wisconsin statutes, and whereas the clerk's staff has attested to having properly maintained control of all election facilities, technology, and ballots, and whereas the Common Council in May of 2020 formed the Ad Hoc Committee on Elections, called the Committee, for the purpose of ensuring safe, fair, and legitimate elections during the pandemic, and whereas then clerk Chris Teske was a member in good standing of the committee and attended meetings thereof, and whereas the committee working with the clerk's office approved the purchase of voting technology, PPE for poll workers, 
funding for communication campaigns for early in-person absentee voting and absentee voting and ballot drop boxes. And whereas in June of 2020, the clerk's staff, along with the clerk's staffs of Racine, Milwaukee, Madison, and Kenosha, prepared a template for a safe and fair election. And whereas on July 21st, 2020, this council unanimously approved the Wisconsin Safe Voting Plan and acceptance of a grant center for tech and civic life, CTCL, in the amount of $1.093 million. And whereas on September 24, 2020, this council unanimously approved acceptance of an additional grant from CTCL in the amount of $522,200. And whereas the Center for Tech and Civic Life stated that its funds, quote, must be used exclusively for the public purpose of planning and operationalizing safe and secure election administration in the city of Green Bay in accordance with the Wisconsin Safe Voting Plan 2020. And whereas the committee ensured that expenditures of CTCL grant funds were consistent with the Questions Commission, as well as with CTCL's statement, and whereas such expenditures of CTCL grant funds were also approved by this council, paid per standard and customary city procedures by appropriate city staff and have been made public. And whereas city staff participated in security planning for the November election with the Green Bay Police Department, which included training related to securing polling locations and security training for poll workers, and whereas allegations have been made publicly calling into question the propriety of election administration in Green Bay following acceptance of the CTCL grant. Now therefore be it resolved that the Common Council of the proudly asserts that the August and November 2020 elections administered by the city of Green Bay were properly executed in an accurate, safe and secure manner and hereby rejects allegations to the contrary. Thank you, Alder. Your Honor, may I um, make a few quick um, comments of my own? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. I have been wondrously quiet tonight, you've noticed. Thank you. Um, my colleagues know that I do my homework and that I really am interested in establishing a fundamental understanding based on facts of everything that we have to vote on for help all the time. And when I go to committee meetings, and I go to every committee meeting I can, I can watch solutions being developed. And so when the elections committee was formed, I wasn't on it, of course, I was brand new. Almost every single, maybe every elections committee meeting. And you know, I might have even in some of the members of the elections committee. And so I listened and I questioned and I saw robust I saw varied perspectives from a really varied group of people. And I saw a constantly growing list of things that had to be done. And during that time, listening to those meetings, I never saw anyone try to usurp the, the authority or the responsibility of the clerk. Um, what we have now, months after it all ended, is two diametrically opposed stories about our elections last year. We have the story of what actually happened, and we have a story that has been admittedly, openly, politically motivated that tells a different story. I know what happened. I am confident in what happened. And I would ask my colleagues to support this resolution. And so we can put an end to this finger pointing and move forward and get busy on the business of our city. And before I ask you to, to accept this resolution and to sign on to it, I would like to ask our third co-sponsor of this resolution, um, Alder Lefebvre, to tell us why she felt that she, we must not sit still and be quiet. We must have a response. Do that, uh, Mr. Mayor. Sure, Alder Lefebvre. Thank you. I apologize. I did not listen to the testimony at the Capitol. Um, I didn't see the notification when it was going on, so I missed it. But then I did read in the paper on some of the 
the stuff. And I became very, very concerned because I do believe in the integrity of all the people that were involved in this election, that they stepped up and they did their job. So I was very, I contacted um, Alderdorf and expressed my my opinion that I felt very um, upset what, what was going on in our state capitol, the attacks on our honor. Actually, they were attack, attacking the honor of this city. And I was very upset about it. So uh, I had a good discussion with Alder Dorf, and she said that she was going to um, look into some things and she was going to get back to me. And uh, she was very wise in contacting Alder Gerlach because she's very, um, I know from a lot of our meetings, her discussions are very well done. And um, they actually did the work of coming up with this res the wording of this resolution. And I really, really am that they spent on it. And um, they asked if, you know, I could, my name could be put on it. Although I just pushed for it, I guess. That's basically what I did. And uh, I thank them very much for what they did. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, no, I know um, you three put a lot of work into this. I understand that. Um, but I, like I said in closed session, I, I guess the point that I was trying to make. Alder, Alder Stoyer, Alder, Alder Stoyer, uh, please don't say anything you talked about in closed session. Oh, you know, put right. in order. I, I apologize. You're right. You're right. I mean, uh, oh. Well, Your Honor, I don't think I think that's okay for him to say what he's going to say. I, you know that's, what, not, I, that's not any confidential information that uh, right. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't. You know, I don't think I was going to do anything like that. I, you know, I, I, I will state. You know, I will state. Let me. Let me just. Whole session is sacrosanct. I think it's just. Uh, I, I think I need, a, I need some cookies. All right. <laughs> I would anyway, ask, I would can ask, I just continue? I'll, I'll be good. I promise. Okay. Um, all right. Like I said, I, I sat through the three hours and 45 minutes of that meeting in Madison. I took 10 pages of notes. I got in touch with Attorney Chavez, and we, we talked about a lot of this. You know, there, there's a lot of things here that she said, oh, that's not true, not true, whatever, blah, blah. And you know, we went through things, but I didn't go through all 10 pages. So part of me is saying that, you know, we have this meeting coming up on the 30th. And Attorney Chavez is still working on a number of things. And I, all I'm saying is that it would be nice to, you know, have these ten pages of notes. We can look at them. You can say this is true, this is not true, because I think I think I think it's look at that. So, um, you know, so with the resolution, I I'm in favor of Green Bay is a great city, and that we we are good, and we're trying to do the best we can, and we need to be. For the people and all that but the one point is at the end your last now therefore you know i i have just a little concerns with it only because we still have a couple of open threads here and i i don't know if any of the other others would agree with that i mean a lot of the other whereas is are basically fact you know i understand that and or you're just stating fact but at the end it's saying that everything was perfect and Maybe in some minds it was, but I think a lot of folks are thinking it was not perfect. So before we do that, um, I would feel more comfortable just, you know, getting getting all these other answers, uh, questions answered before I finally said, yep, I totally agree with that. That's just the way I feel right now. Maybe somebody can change my mind. That's it for now. Thanks, Alder. Alder, through that. Uh, for those who wrote the resolution, why would you add Clerk Chris Teske's name to the resolution? What, what's the reasoning behind that? So it was one of uh, her name was brought up quite a bit in the testimony. So we just put it in there to show that she did come to the meetings. But you don't think it's inappropriate to mention a former clerk who left the city under the conditions that the emails claim she left? Obviously, I didn't, or I wouldn't have put I'm it in sure. there. And I, no. I did check with legal. 
Obviously, I thought it was okay, but I did check with legal before we put it in there. And yes, I do think it's okay to have that in there, but I'm not completely opposed to editing on this resolution. Yeah, I mean, editing would be great. Express full confidence. Um, quite frankly, I don't have full confidence in just about anything in life because there's so much that we don't know about everything. For me to express full confidence in anything is a bit of a stretch. And so that should be kind of, uh, you know, edited out. I, I, I don't, the resolution in support of, you know, poll workers, um, people who worked hard, you know, okay. PPE, pandemic, there's a, there's a lot in here that makes sense, but to me it reads like we're fine seal and delivering that everything about the election was proper and correct when uh, mm -hmm. there are so many open things right now. What's, so what's open? Things. What, 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 what that okay. Vanessa told Alder, you, don't you one sec, one sec, one sec, Alder Galvin. Alder Burnett still has the floor. What's not open? There's plenty that's not open. There are several thousands of pages of records that were released. There are other open records requests that have not been fulfilled. Again, not saying that they're, you know, going slow. We may be if I had a hearing, and who knows, maybe city council members may be asked to, you know, testify. Um, there are a lot of open questions, but those are the main ones. Um, I'm not saying we did anything. That's what I'm saying. I don't like the partisanship. I don't like how that hearing took place where only the Republicans showed up. The Democrats were invited, but they didn't show up. For whatever reason, they didn't show up. Five witnesses you know, testified. People are calling for the mayor's resignation before uh, investigation could even happen. There's a lot that I don't like about this process from all sides. I don't want people to attack the city, but I don't want to you know, say have full confidence in something when there's so many open things that we as a council are not aware of. It's, it's just open things. So I want to support our employees. I want to support those who work very hard. But if you're saying we have full confidence in the planning of the election, I mean, honestly, we didn't know a lot about what happened until that, you know, news story broke a week ago. You know, we didn't, I didn't know the tension between the clerk's office and the mayor's office. I mean, did many of you know the details that yeah. were shared? That, how in the world would you know that if, if you, unless you had access to the emails that were shared in the open no, records? No, no. I mean, how, anyway, so, so I'm not. I, I, I can I, answer I, that. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to refer that to the Election and Policy Committee for review and edits. Second. The motion has been made. I couldn't hear that. There's been a motion made to refer the item to the Protection and Policy Committee. Motion was made by Alder Burnett and seconded by Alder Weary. Comments on that motion? Alder Dorf. Yeah, I don't think it belongs there. I think that we've been asked to take action by lots of citizens. Um, I'm sorry that some members of the, the city council were not as involved with elections as other members, everybody to know everything. But I do expect that if you weren't as involved, they would take the word of the people who were very deeply involved with these elections and were on this committee and worked with us for hours and hours and hours every week. I can assure you that everything in this resolution is true. I think now is the time that we say we are standing up for our city. We are standing up for our elections. So I don't want it to go to production and policy. I will definitely be voting against that. It belongs at a council meeting. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Galvin. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. We used to have a saying at the police department when uh, certain media stories would come out or uh, um, it was never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> and I, I think that's what we've got here. Um, you know, you look at uh, um, all these people making the accusations based on cherry picking certain parts of certain emails, certain rumors, innuendo. And, you know, and, and the thing I, I find somewhat disturbing here is that as alders, we're privy to more information timely than anyone else on the street out there. And I know some of you are busting at the seams to make even more of it more public and transparent. And I agree, it, it'd be amazing if people would get as involved as we get in city government so they're not out there speculating off of stuff that they see on social media 
or that some uh, um, organization puts out to support their beliefs and their theories. But this, to me, after listening to our city staff talk, if some of us have questions or concerns, why weren't they voiced? I didn't hear too many voiced tonight. Um, and if we're going to wait for every unit and organization out there that has an agenda out there to come to, to, to finish their investigation, I mean, look, look at making a murder, the Stephen Avery murder trial. Years later, some attorney comes out, starts dragging up information, and time and time is wasted. Made some people a hell of a lot of money, but in the end, what was the end result? After all that anguish, all that agony, putting everyone through the ringer again and again and again, and I, this is what I see the same thing here. We've got people with an agenda, and it's not the agenda is not to help the city of Green Bay or look better or anything else. It's just to, to push their own agenda forward. And they're going to do it any way they can. And the way uh, people seem to have learned to do this is to throw mud and just keep stirring it up and keep throwing it. And who cares who gets hurt in the, in the meantime? We, we have a resolution here. I agree with, with, with it. I, I think we did a good job. I believe the staff that, that we have who said everything was above board. I didn't hear anything tonight that made me think anyone did anything wrong or illegal. The the rumors out there that I've been hearing the most were, were answered, you know, asked and answered. If, if you didn't like the answer, why didn't you ask more questions? I mean, this was the forum to do it in when we had, were out in public here. And to say you're gonna sit back and wait for, how many organizations are gonna sit back and wait for? How long are we gonna sit and wait for? I. I, I think this resolution doesn't put us in a bad position. And if someone could show me some evidence that anybody did anything wrong, I'll be the first one on board to say, do the investigation, get the conviction, fire them, put them in jail, whatever needs to be done. I'll be on board with that right away. But I haven't seen anything yet. The DA is still waiting for people to come to him with something. I also found out that the Sheriff's Department hasn't been approached with any kind of violations. But for all these people yelling about violations and and investment firings and corruption. What have we seen yet? And yet we're sitting here twiddling our thumbs, waiting for someone to come up with some evidence so we can move forward and do something. Do what? With what? We have nothing. And I'm, I'm quite frankly, I'm tired of seeing the city and its employees and its processes dragged through the mud. I have no problem with reviewing what we did. We did a crap job in April. And we fixed it. And we spent a lot of time and a lot of effort fixing it. Was it the best? I'd like to think it was the best we could do. Could we do better? You can always do better, which is why we should always review our processes and listen to complaints and take action on those. But I'm not seeing anything here with what has been alleged that, that has any kind of ring of truth to it at all. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Johnson and then Um, so I'm going to, you know, I have some comments that my comments are on the motion as a whole, not a referral. So I'm just going to hold mayor. Okay. Alder Gerlach. Just a couple quick points um, to respond to some of the things that were said. Um, it's just a shame that we're so late in the evening now because so many of those people who spoke in open session said, please support the resolution, please support the resolution. And you notice they're all going to bed now and, and they're, not, uh, they're not here um, when we do discuss the resolution. I want to just mention in uh, response to what Alder Stoyer said, um, we are not saying in this resolution that it was perfect. What we're saying is that those two elections, August and November, that's what this is about, were, ex were properly executed in an accurate, safe, and secure manner. We're not, we didn't use the word perfect. And as far as using um, Clerk Teske's name, um, I would never, ever write or say something bad about Clerk Teske. Um, but those of you who didn't see, see the fact that her name was invoked over and over and over again to um, denigrate the city of Green Bay. And she was twice in that hearing called an election superhero. So to simply state 
uh, it, you know, in, in an accurate way that she was a member in good standing of the committee and attended the meetings, I think is important because so many of the decisions were made in those meetings, especially the decisions of how to respond to an emergency situation. Thanks, Alder. On the motion, Alder Burnett. Alder, I may or thank you. Uh, ter, uh, former, ter, cl former clerk Teske in that hearing was called an election superhero because in the opinion of that attorney, she stood up to the mayor's office for issues that she did not feel comfortable with. That was why they called her an election superhero. Whether you like that label or whether you agree with it or not, that's why they called her an election superhero. So now we're just, oh, she was in a good, it just seems weird to me that we would include a former employee who left under the conditions that she claimed existed within city hall as proved by emails or at least indicated by emails. And now we're going to include her in a resolution. That's just, it's really strange. Imagine how you would feel if you were her, you know, the city of green Bay passes a resolution that mentions me, but doesn't mention the reasons why I left the city. This seems strange. That's all I'm, I'm for my referral back to protection and policy. I mean, we did this, I went there, came here, went there, conjecture, conjecture, conjecture. This thing is full of conjecture, and we're going to say this is full confidence. How can you possibly say full confidence when Attorney Chavez is still going to give us answers to some of the questions that we had today? That she, and it's not her fault. She didn't have answers to some of the questions that we proposed. How can you say you have full confidence if you don't have all the answers? You don't have all the answers. You think you have all the answers. You're basically, to me, it seems to to me, it's a loyalty pledge. Either you, you're on board with the election and everything about the election, or you're some crazy person out there that's lumped in with all the conspiracy theorists. I'm on either side, quite frankly. I'm in the middle saying, hey, we don't know all the answers right now. We are still waiting for many of the answers. We may be investigated from an outside. We're not yet, but we may be. To, 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 lump, to jump to a conclusion that we have full confidence in something that we don't have all the, all the facts yet, and I'm not gonna, I support our staff. I, I support people, poll workers and volunteers. I support a lot of people who touch this election, um, but I don't have full confidence right now. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Dorf on the motion? Yes. Um, it, it's, well, I guess it's not about referral, but to explain why, why many of the allegations were that the clerk's office wasn't involved that this the election wasn't run under the province the clerk's office i guess that particular line demonstrates that indeed the clerk's office was involved throughout the process thank you thanks alder on the motion any final thoughts or comments seeing none all uh, alder corpus dax um thank you mr mayor um you know Ultimately, I do believe that the uh, uh, August 2020 elections administered by the city of Green Bay were properly executed, accurate, safe, in a secure manner. Agree, perfect. None of it's ever going to be perfect as much as we may try and as much money as we can, as a city, try to dump into making it perfect. It's never going to be perfect. There's always going to be issues. But I do believe that this, that they were executed in an accurate, safe, and secure manner. Um, I stand behind the staff that worked the election. I don't believe any of them would put their jobs in jeopardy, would intentionally do, or even, yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do anything to jeopardize their positions. Um, you know, I was actually personally insulted by some of the allegations that were, that were made about the elections, because I worked. After seeing what happened in April, I worked the August election, I worked in November election, I worked this past February, and I plan to work in April again. I basically plan to work every single election that I can. So I felt like I was being um, targeted as, an, as a poll worker. So I also want to stand up for those poll workers who worked those elections. Um, so yes, I, I support this measure. That's it. Thanks, Alder. So there is a motion on the- One last poll. question. Alder Weary. Thank you. One last question. Did um, <clears throat> did the two people who were most involved, Clerk Teske and, and Clerk Waite, did they sign off on this? Did they help create it? Of course not. They don't work okay. here anymore. Thanks. Thanks.
Thank you. Okay, we have a motion to refer. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 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 Here's the no. name of it. No. That motion fails. Looking for a motion. Oh, I move that um, to approve the resolution. Second. Motion has been made by Alder Dorf, seconded by Alder Gerlach to approve the resolution. Uh, Alder John. Was, was that to me, Mayor? Sorry, you broke yeah. up. Yeah, okay. yes, it was. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so I supported referral largely in part because I want to get to a position where I feel like I can I can support this particular resolution. I think it's important that most of council supports this, and I feel like that there are some unanswered questions that. Um, deserved an appropriate amount of attention. I mean, we gave this, this was posted 24 hours ago. I mean, that is a very short window for the general public as well as council to have an opportunity to digest this and think about modifications that might make it a stronger document. So, so the one thing I wanna say, and, and I'm gonna merge some of my comments regarding agenda item number one with this particular resolution. Um, the first thing I wanna point out is I wanna thank the members of the public tonight, as well as the many people who called or emailed with perspectives on both sides of this discussion. Alderdorf was absolutely right mentioning that, I mean, there was a coordinated campaign that yielded probably, I don't know, dozens of emails of, of, of a template message uh, in support, but I also received a lot of um, custom messages and they're e both equally important. People are willing to put their name um, to whatever that statement is. And so now um, Personally, this feedback to be non-valuable, and I find it incredibly important when making well-informed decisions. I want to point out, though, that I also fully support our poll workers. I was one of them. Um, I volunteered at both, uh, or I worked at both the August and the November elections. I, I offered to help out in April. Um, that, that didn't happen. Um, but I've never seen or believed any evidence to suggest that this conversation was meant to be an Salt contributions. And I also fully support our staff, and I know personally that they worked tirelessly to correct the mistakes that were made in April. Um, but I'm going to err on the side of patience, and I'm also going to argue that we're debating the wrong issue. Personally, I feel no need that, to prematurely declare condemnation, just as I see no value to rush to declaring vindication. In fact, it was said earlier tonight that we don't need to respond to every accusation made against us, yet promoting acceptance of this resolution is doing just that. We have serious problems and issues that are being discussed in our community, and the most significant one of which is a lack of trust in what happened. In a resolution, I do not believe feels that trust. The appearance of a Republican hearing does not look good. The appearance of a partisan administration does not look good. The appearance of a self-investigation meant to exonerate does not look good. The appearance of a partisan investigation field through open records requests with one-sided input does not look good. And I hate to be the one to call out the partisan actors claiming this is not a partisan issue. The irony is palpable. This partisan issue will not be resolved through more partisanship. Two wrongs will not make a right. Our community needs healing, and that doesn't happen when this body and our community are given 24 hours to respond to a resolution designed to silence those who simply want to ask questions and have them answered. This is a PR campaign disguised as a resolution that reads like an affidavit. We need foundational facts to support the claims which are sadly lacking. In fact, there are several opinions used in the recitals or statements provided without substantiating documentation. And the pronouncement at the end provides broad sweeping assumptions which we do not know. Perhaps we were too naive and trusting to believe the acceptance of this grant would not become partisan, even though we asked the questions and to some extent I think we've invited this on ourselves. I do not believe the election results were compromised or tainted, but this is about process and trust in a very important institution within our democracy. Trust that right now does not exist and will not be restored through a resolution without substantiating facts. And I also do not believe that there was any malfeasance involved in this election. I'm gonna state that again, there was any malfeasance involved in this election in fact, at the first meeting after the election, I commended the mayor and noted that he was the subject of unfair criticism carried over from the April election. However, I cannot reasonably conclude that inadvertent mistakes were not made based on the information we've seen and been provided. Perhaps a final report and not a draft, 
or an independent investigation free of partisanship. But we can improve. We can always improve. And it starts with open community conversations about concerns shared by the public. Again, it should be made clear that my opposition to this resolution does not mean that I believe anything wrong happened. Rather, it signals my support for a patient process with a request that council and this administration redirect their attention to what truly ails us. Closing the door to dialogue by, de by definitively declaring everything was perfect does not help us heal, even though it may bandage the wound that is not actually causing the pain throughout our community. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Alder. Alder Scannell. Thank you, Mayor. Well, first of all, it doesn't say everything was perfect. And second of all, so I'm gonna think that there's just been the problem I'm having with giving any credence to uh, uh, the accusations is that not, not one of them is based on any fact, not one of them. So by giving them credence, by saying we need more time to sift through the smoke, I, I it just goes against me. And they say that uh, it accuse someone of bipartisanship because they stand up to defend what is wrongly accused by another part, I, I think that's kind of perverse too. Uh, and I also find it amusing that uh, so much is made about this money, like Zuckerberg is some great flaming liberal. You kidding me? The man is only interested in his bottom line. He defended Donnie's lies on his Facebook because it was making him money and liberals were yelling at him to take it down and he didn't because it was making him money and it made him money to look good, to support, uh, give money to support uh, uh, these elections in the pandemic. It's got nothing to do with liberal or conservative when it comes to Zuckerberg, it's his bottom line. So there's just been so much smoke and twisted and perverse. It's just, I'm just tired of the whole thing. To me, this puts it to bed. There's nothing in this statement that's not factual. There's nothing in this statement that I have any problem with whatsoever. I'm tired of playing games with people blowing smoke. I'm not going to play that game. <clears throat> I support the resolution and I'll vote for it. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> you know, as far as the ad hoc commission, I went to numerous of those meetings as well. Uh, I worked at Central Count for nine hours. I listened to testimony. You know, and I'm not... I don't want to pat in the back or anything, but I'm just saying a lot of us as alders have done a lot of work. We have listened to a lot of things and, you know, our, our workers did a fantastic job. You know, if I was there nine hours. I thought things went pretty well. You know, there were some allegations, there was some personality conflicts. There was some shouting, okay. a little, little this and that, but you know what, did that affect the vote? I don't necessarily think so. But, you know, what is the harm? And, you know, we got a council meeting on the 30th. I don't see what the harm is to get a resolution there that we can all agree with 100%. Alder, John Alder Johnson brought up some very good points, you know. So I, I commend the three for putting it together, but I, I still feel that it wasn't a perfect election. But, you know, by signing this, we're basically – saying everything's fine and we're just going to move forward and we still have some there are still some open questions so i i'm not going to support it at this time i'll, I'll wait for two weeks and i hopefully I, i'll be able to change my mind thank you thanks orf okay um i hope we still can vote on it tonight and i'd like to amend this by saying um taking out clerk teske's name that seems to be a problem for two people so um i just would like to state that the clerk was a member in good standing of the committee and attended the meetings because of the accusations that we did things behind the back of the clerk. So I would like to amend this resolution and take out the words then dash Chris Teske and just have the clerk was a member in good standing. Second. I second that. Motion was made and by Alder Dorf and seconded by Alder Scannell. Discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That amendment has been adopted. Uh, motion to approve is on the floor. Alder Weir. Board Mayor, can you use the board, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Sure, Alder Weary. Thank you. Um, boy, uh, Alder Johnson really, and Alder Burnett stated most of what I was gonna say, so I'm gonna try to pare this down here. Um, sometimes you can, you know, the resolution is definitely, the word smithing is commendable. Um, sometimes you can say a lot of factual things, but omit things. Uh, there's no mention really of our clerk and assistant clerk leaving. You know, that made it pretty clear why they, why they left and there's a lot of unanswered questions there. Um, County Clerk Juno voiced her concerns at the, at the state hearing. So it, there's a line besides the one where we have the full faith and confidence because it is difficult. I, I don't know everything. I'd hate to sign my name to something and then some of these accusations come true. I'm like, well, now, now we look horrible. Uh, there's one part, there's one whereas, whereas the Center for Tech and Civic Life stated that its funds must be used exclusively for the public purpose of planning and operationalizing safe and secure election administration in the city of Green Bay in accordance with Wisconsin Safe Voting Plan. Well, that's that's true, but it's not all the truth, right? I mean, they had, they had other goals and it's clear if you look at the application we sent in, they ask a lot of different questions and this goes to that $150,000 that was not unanimous. I think it was a nine to three vote on that part of, of how that money was going to be used because the Center for Civic Tech and Life really wanted to target certain populations. And then we, we asked who and where and why, and we were told you get a report later. We're still waiting on that. But some of us had concerns with, with that because it wasn't laid out. So really, that was part of their goal. That's not stated here. I mean, that's that's the more nebulous part of what happened. So this looks bright and cheery, but there were other things that, that happened. Um, obviously, I, I worked the election too, and where I worked at the polling things went smoothly. It was great. Uh, um, superheroes, mm -hmm. brilliant, hardworking election workers. Incredible. Um, proud of the work they did and proud of the work the ad hoc committee did. I'm glad Alder Dorf brought that up because we really plowed through a lot of a lot of difficult things in a short amount of time. Um, I, I would like to, as we talked about earlier, Attorney Chavez has a report that's not complete. We saw kind of a draft, but we even heard there's other people that she'd like to speak to. And I would like to hear the comments. And hopefully, you know, former Clerk Teske and Kim Waite and, and Sandy Juno would weigh in and, and maybe fill out some of this picture for us. And so I'd like to get that report before I vote on this. And maybe the state legislature will, will invite the city down and allow the city to present its case and clear the air. So this might be a little premature. So I'm, I'm going to vote no, because I don't think it's uh, the right timing. And I think it's a little too uh, perfectly worded. Thanks. Thanks, Alder. <clears throat> uh, Alder Garrett. I just want, uh, I'm, I'm just throwing this out to anyone who can answer. What could happen between now and March 30th that would change your mind by March 30th? You might want to direct that to to somebody, Alder. I, uh, well, Alder Weary, um, Alder sure. Stoyer, I don't well, know. I, I, I would have this, but I would think our a report would be back in two weeks and if it's not that's fine but you know but I, I would hope that at least would help and then maybe you know we'll hear more from the state if they're going to have any more or not or if it's just going to be a one-sided show well I can I can answer too all the story go ahead um like I said yes thank you your honor um like I said, I mean, a lot of, you know, the election, you know, I worked it, you know, I think a lot of things were done very well and the, and the workers did well. Uh, I just feel that um, with this open, with this report that Attorney Chavez is working on, Chavez, Chavez is working on that there's still a few things that we need to close up. The fact that there was a four and a half, four hour and 45 minute meeting at the state that I witnessed that seemed to be one-sided you know, I'd like to see other things come into play. I would like us to go into it with an even playing field. I know that's not always easy. So that's all, you know, and if I can wait two weeks to get that information, I'll be more than willing to support something. But there's just a couple of, you know, I just want some closure. That's all. That's it. Thank you. 
Thanks, Alder. Alder Lefebvre. I hope Alder Dorf and Alder Gerlash don't get mad at me, but listening to people, I want this resolution to be voted on. I think it's a good one, but I want a vast majority of us voting on this. I'm afraid it's going to be, it might pass, might have enough voting, yes, I'm not sure. But if we don't, if we're so close, even a six, you know, seven to five or whatever, I'm afraid people are gonna then really go after us and say, oh, look at, you know, we got, these are liberal ones that are on, on the, these are the, you know, the liberals the, that are voting for this and they're going to go after us as, I don't know, I just, I just have concerns now about how this is gonna be perceived so would would others want to maybe we should wait wait the two weeks and bring it back and actually we can also maybe work on it a little bit better i don't know i just i'm conflicted right now thanks Thank alder, alder dorf and then alder galvin I'm okay with bringing it back in two weeks. Um, I, I don't think that there will be, I, I do believe there'll be certain members on this council that no matter how long we wait, it will never be long enough. No matter what we get, we will never get every answer that they want. However, since you are one of the co-authors of this, <laughs> or the co-supporters of this, um, I wonder if someone would like to make a motion to hold it for two weeks. Mayor. Yeah, Alder Galvin, go ahead. Actually, I'd like to, not two weeks, I'd like to make a, a motion that we hold this until uh, Attorney Chavez's report is done and we've been able to read through it. And then uh, uh, there were some good arguments made towards that end. And uh, anyway, that's my motion. Hold it until Attorney Chavez's report is done and we've been able to read through it and then we can meet again and make a decision. I'll second that. Motion made by Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Any discussion on that motion? Alder Scannell? Just uh, the motion is to hold it, and I'll support that. But I am a little confused. Uh, there are some Alders who seem to think there are questions about our former clerk and assistant clerk that we don't know the answers to. I can understand the public not knowing the answers, but we know the answers. We can't discuss it. So I'm a little confused by some of my fellow alders who think there are issues that, uh, that they certainly haven't brought up before when we could have uh, discussed these things and found the answers if there was a question they had. We know what went with uh, our, our former clerk and uh, assistant clerk. There's no problem there that we know so I'm a little disappointed. People are, they seem to be playing in to the public pandering there. Uh, I can understand the public that known, but, uh, and we can't talk about it, but we know, and it's, it's not in, okay, that's all. Thanks, Alder. So we do have a motion by uh, Alder Galvin, seconded by Alder Stoyer to hold this item until city attorney's report is ready for council. We could could you say until for two weeks till our next council meeting, Alder Gavin? I, I, well, if I actually, I, I'd love to see if Vanessa is able to talk to the people that she wants to talk to, and so that we can finally get out of their mouth what what they feel, and or, and then that would be to me a complete report. I trust Vanessa um, to do a thorough job to do a great job. And uh, I think that uh, what she gives back to us is, I think hopefully gonna convince anyone that might be on the edge here, um, what, what, it, what they need to hear to help that make up be, their mind. That could be months. Well, I hope not. Um, you know, I know the attorney's office is, is under a lot of pressure to do a lot of things. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that uh, her invest. It sounded like you know she couldn't guarantee two weeks, and and that's why, if this comes up again in two weeks, we're we're and we have no no new information. What do we do? So I, I mean, um, Vanessa sounded like she was going to put together a pretty thorough report, 
try and talk to people that everybody would love to hear from. Um, and can, and can we ask her? Will it, would it be done? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Attorney Chavez. It is my intention to get that completed this week. Um, I don't know that it will sure be done this week, but I can't imagine it'll be longer than the um, 30th. Okay. Okay. So with that knowledge, are we ready to vote on this motion? What is it again? Could you repeat the motion, Alder Galvin? Yes, that uh, this uh, this be held until after we've had uh, time to read through uh, Vanessa's uh, report. Okay, that motion has been made and seconded. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that uh, item is to be held. On to resolutions. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. So we have a motion to suspend the rules and take up, um, we'll say one through nine with one roll call vote. Does that make sense to all? Yeah. Um, the motion was made by Alder Scan, all seconded by Alder Corpus Dax. Uh, all in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it, the rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. To adopt. Second. Motion made by Alder Corpus Dax, seconded by Alder Scandal to adopt resolutions one through nine, and we will use the board. Mayor, can I ask about number 10? Is Maybe I'm missing something. We're, we're voting on that as well. We didn't include it. We didn't. No, just held it. Okay, I'm just asking. Mr. Galvin? All right. And those are adopted unanimously. On to ordinances first reading. Well, don't we have to do, don't we still have to have, uh, handle number 10? Don't we have to hold it or something? Oh yeah, good point. Motion to hold. That's what I asked. Second. Motion made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Corpus Dax to hold uh, uh, item T10 until the report uh, provided by Attorney Chavez is ready. All in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That resolution is held. Ordinance is first reading. Motion to advance. Second. Motion to advance made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? All right, all in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Will oppose nay. The motion is successful and it is advanced to a second and final reading. Referral petitions and communications. Alder Brunette. Improvement in services um, to, for discussion and possible action on a constituent idea to improve fall loose leaf collection. I'll have to remember that. Thanks Alder. Uh, Alder Stoyer, did you have one? Yes, I do. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is kind of a combination of law or protection and policy. They, we both can discuss it, but it is to revisit with possible action the January 2020 ordinance dealing with the delivery of advertising materials, often wrapped in plastic, as an environmental nuisance and safety hazard. These materials are often distributed onto lawns and driveways of mostly residential units. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any others? Alder Fave. Um, yes, I have two. The first one goes to the traffic bicycle and protest. Oh, excuse me, it's late. Protest street. <laughs> you know what I'm. To look at the installing rectangular rapid flashing be beacon, and it's called an RRFP or B, for safe pedestrian crossings from Bay Beach sidewalk and wildlife sanctuary entrance on East Shore Drive. 
The second one, I'm not sure where it would go. It's a long one. As Green Bay formed a sustainability commission, whose one, one of stated goals is to establish a baseline for any possible carbon uh, reduction goals, and as several U.S. cities have already established those goals and have banned all new drive-throughs, I'm asking Green Bay to consider on, on a ban on new drive-throughs for 2021. I'll reference to the cities: Minneapolis, Fairhaven, New Jersey. I have trouble pronouncing this one city in uh, Missouri, Long Beach, California, and South. Uh, Los Angeles. The reasons, curbing carbon monoxide emissions, improving pedestrian safety, reducing litter, and enhancing walkability. I think these are all goals that the city um, adheres to. And I think that this is something that we should look into. I don't know which committee that would go to. Uh, would that be maybe plan? Attorney Chavez, or where, where, where would you recommend sending that? I'm not really sure at this point. Um, if you just want to, re if you want to refer it to committee, we can designate the committee after we decide okay. that okay. Where, where it belongs. All right, thank you. Thanks, Alder. Any others? Alter Vanderlees? Yes, go ahead. Uh, this goes to the Department of Public Works. I want to thank them for replacing a stop sign that was knocked down on Military Frontage Road on 6th Street. I want to just acknowledge that they did it promptly, and I thank them. Very good. Thanks, Alder. Others? Entertain a motion. Motion to refer. I have one also, but I'll wait and email it so we don't have to pay for it. <laughs> Thank you, Alder. Motion has been made to refer all petitions and communications. Second. Seconded by Alder Gerlach. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. You guys have it. Motion Those have been adjourn. referred. Motion has been made to adjourn by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Weary. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. Uh, Lancha. Good night, everyone. <laughs>